We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I was to my left. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, just so everybody is aware, Norton Media is here recording. If you are recording, please let us know. Start the meeting off by entertaining a motion to approve the January 5th open warrant, uh, open meeting minutes. So moved. Is there second. a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next item is the warrants. Mr. Cohen. I reviewed and approved the following warrants January 5th, 2023, $303,698.07. I'd like to enter it into public record. Thank you. Next is the student representative updates. So from the JCS, uh, they're on day two of their elective program. It has gone really well. Over 400 students taking 39 different courses with peers in all grades. K through three taught by JCS teachers, staff, parents, and volunteers, including Dr. Bayetta. We are hoping to have a big sharing assembly after electives are over so the students can see what their friends did in other courses. Uh, there are artists and residents. Jess Tracy is beginning next week. She'll be working in all students pre-K through third on reimagining uh, the JCS lobby and the main stairwell. The new, the, the new design will be bright, include the sea turtle mascot, and celebrate the school's values. The school committee is welcome to come to the unveiling in March. So the Yale had their kickoff assembly presentations for their annual Boosterthon Fun Run fundraiser yesterday. They have two Boosterthon employees on site every day from yesterday through next Friday for greeting kids as they come into school with music and dancing uh, to getting into each and every classroom to review the videos of the day, being in lunches and recesses, and seeing the kids out at the end of the day. Teachers have incentives for fundraising in each classroom, and the Boosterthon coaches get into every class to help with these incentives and review the character traits associated with the journey of the Boosterthon program. So this year's character lessons are gratitude, stewardship, perseverance, and bravery. And the videos, lessons, and activities are meant to help teach these traits to the kids in ways that they will better understand them. Uh, this activity will continue each day through next Thursday, with the culmination being next Friday, February 3rd, with the kids running laps in a darkened gym with it being our Glow Run 2023. Uh, the kids have a blast and are treated like Olympians as they enter with their homeroom swag. It is great fun. We are hoping to raise $20,000 for a new playground with the start of that project happening in April, so our kids right now should get a chance to be on the new playground before the end of the school year. And then from the high school, we have the Student versus Teacher Talent Show, which is tomorrow night. Uh, February has a bunch of cool field trips, activities, and guest speakers. In February, the Science Honor Society students will be joining the elementary school students for Science Day. Uh, World Language students will be taking a trip to the MFA in Boston. Computer Science students will take a field trip to Microsoft. Financial Literacy and Economics classes will be welcoming a guest speaker from America Credit. Counseling Services and Mr. NHS will be coming up in March. That's all we have. Great. Any questions? I'm sorry, what school was the elective that? Was that JCS? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, next is the recognition of all New England band festival participants. Dr. Bayer. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee and the public that's here tonight. I'd like to recognize three students um, who were recommended um, to attend the All New England Band Festival um, this past fall in at Plymouth State University. Um, and uh, I, I went, um, hosted one student plus mine. Uh, another one met, met us up there, um, and we saw um, drop off in the morning, followed by um, them practicing all day as if for the first time seeing the music and then an actual show in the evening that was just amazing I don't know how they are able to do that in, in, in one day worth of work but we'd like to recognize um, the three students that are um, that participated so we have Eris Naus who's here I believe come on up and we have Emily Barrick is Emily here hi there she is and we have somebody you might know, Margaret Bayetta. Yes, she is related. She's also here. So um, what's really unique about it is it's actually the first time in quite a while that we participated. And if I'm not wrong, I believe all three of you are potentially involved in some other festivals that are coming up. They're going out to UMass Amherst in a couple of weeks. Same idea. 
uh, from throughout New England. So congratulations to the three of you folks. Thanks for representing us. It was a huge long day, and then both Miss Barrett driving M home, and I drove these two home, and we got home at wicked late. Um, <laughs> it was it was approaching 11 p.m. or so when we, when we 11:30 when we got home. Um, so it was a long day, but it was well worth it, and I'd like to recognize the three of you for it. Good luck in a couple weeks. We guys are up for the next Thank one. You. All right. Thank you. All right. Pleasure. Nice job, Charles. Congratulations. Congratulations. <clears throat> All right. The next item is the Norton High School Sculpture Class presentation. Dr. Kiefer and students. So I have with me tonight three of our sculpture students. They all happen to be seniors. Um, they completed a project-based learning uh, endeavor in the fall um, for which one of the major components is having a more public panel to get feedback not just from their teacher but from uh, the community. So their task was to research and then ultimately design a sculpture, um, a scale model of the sculpture that could be uh, a feature in the town common. And they had to focus on elements of shared Norton history um, and something that would sort of uh, bring a sense of common pride um, in the town. So we had um, Mr. Paulus come and do a little um, lecture on uh, local history, um, and then the students selected their theme. Um, and one of the challenges was they were limited to just recycled cardboard. So um, we did use some adhesives, obviously, but it was a very minimalist approach to see what they could do with very uh, simple materials. Um, so I'm going to let them uh, explain uh, you know, their idea and what they had learned. Um, I also want to give them some public acknowledgement. The three seniors here tonight um, were all academically exempt from the exam this morning, uh, but they all showed up um, to work on a different sculpture which will be exhibited at the Attleboro Art Museum. So I thought that was um, really nice to see some of our older students that didn't have to come to school, that woke up and came in uh, because there's still work to be done. Uh, you know, modeling that behavior for the younger students I think was really uh, made my day, so I appreciate that. Sorry to embarrass you guys. Um, but I think Devin, you want to start, Devin, with the swamp yeah, monster? Um, okay. The swamp monster is called Ben Norton, and it's based off the Hawkmoth swamp monster. Um, the legend is it goes with the Bridgewater Triangle, and the Hawkmoth swamp is a huge part of that, and it relates Norton to the surrounding towns. For this project, like when Mr. Paulus came in, he, when he talked about this, it comes just because it has to do with Norton, but it also goes with my own interests. So it kind of has me in it too, which is like a big part of all the art that I do. I wanted to represent me too. Um, and the Hawk Monk Swamp in general it has a huge part of history. Um, Kingsville War took place on it, so all those casualties are said to be like the spirit. So that's how I can really relate to the history. I know when I was younger, I always thought the Devil's Rock was the coolest thing ever, and I had no idea about all the paranormal history that Norton had. So I feel like that really like gets me and a bunch of other people like really interested in the town and like the deep lore and legend with it. So that's how I really feel like it unifies. And um, the base of it is actually shaped like Norton, so it can really be like the deep, like darker, creepy side of Norton, but I still feel like a little like. Um, my sculpture is a bossy cream pie, and it's set to have a Norton classroom on the inside of it, and um, what made me want to do this was when Mr. Paulus came to talk, he gave his little mini history lesson about Norton, um, he mentioned how the bossy cream pie is a national, is the national dessert for Massachusetts, um, and how it was like a classroom from Norton that brought it to like, legislation and made it 
Everybody loves Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I had the privilege to go and review the whole class along with Mrs. Gallagher, Mr. Duran, Dr. Bayetta, Dr. O'Neill, and this is a small subset of what was presented to us, and the rest are just as incredible as these three in front of us. And it's just amazing that some of the talent um, that came out of this class was absolutely incredible. Kudos to you, Dr. Dr. Kiefer, for, for motivating them and showing them um, and giving them these options and giving them that freedom to make this project their own. And, you know, the basic interpretation you can see what you have here um, is a wide variety. So um, this was, was, a, it was a good day uh, to be there. So congratulations. Uh, everything looks great. You guys did a great job. I wouldn't even know where to begin <laughs> with any one of those things. Never mind just the thought process behind yeah. it, but then to put it to a, a project like that is, is really impressive. You guys do a great job. Thank you. If I could just add one thing. So I also was really lucky to visit. Um, I just want to sort of congratulate you and your classmates. It was really, I'm sure, very difficult. There was a lot of adults walking around that classroom with paper in hand actually evaluating um, under different content area and asking questions. Um, sort of looking for perhaps a certain response to a question or um, kind of leading questions. It was not easy. And I think even as an adult, sometimes we can get a little bit flustered when we are presenting something that we've done. And everybody did such a lovely, lovely job. It was so much fun. And I'm not sure if that was part of the preparation, Dr. Kiefer, that you sort of worked with the students to prepare them for that. But they definitely were kind of on the stage, and they had to respond um, to a lot of different questions and a lot of different people. So congratulations. And I wanted to just say, I think if I'm not mistaken, um, Dr. Baeta, years ago, we were always talked about sort of sharing content areas, mm -hmm. um, working collaboratively. And it was so impressive when we discovered that you really did work with sort of the history team and, and Mr. Paulus to kind of um, offer the students this array of information. Um, so both from sort of that um, art content and then from the history content, really sort of thinking about that and kind of putting it together to create your outcomes. So it was lovely to see. Good job. When, when did the Boston Cream Pie thing happen though? Do we know? 96. Um, yeah. What? 1996. <laughs> it's that recent? 1996. Oh, wow. Yeah, he Okay. There was a contest because the, the state of Massachusetts did not have a pie, and a lot of states you don't have the bird and the flower and all that stuff. So, number of nine, class of '96 here at, at uh, in Norton moved it up and said this is reason why and use historical facts and information. And the legislature said, or the governor I think was yeah. said, yep, let's do it. Governor Wells. That's awesome. 
go oh, on to the Omni Park House website, there's a whole history of really? the Lasso Creek Pie. I had no idea. It's awesome. Congratulations. Really well Good done. Job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job, Congratulations. Girls. And thanks for taking the evening up to come back. <coughs> Appreciate it. Okay. All right, next. Um, all right, so the next item is Dr. Kiefer again, uh, learning trip to Thailand. Do you need the back? Um, sure. <laughs> I remember this trip. It's the same one I'm thinking of. Because I had a kiddo that was interested. Thank you. 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 QR code set up for each student so that the general public that comes to the library can then um, go directly to their uh, feedback form, the same one that um, <laughs> some of our visitors did by hand. So it kind of creates this perpetual cycle of feedback where um, you know, they're getting input from everyone who encounters that piece. So yeah, uh, the public library will be so, hosting. Yeah. Just to invite the community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I am the uh, service learning representative for um, the EF trips for North High School. I work with Ms. Tonelli, who's the uh, global education advisor. Uh, we have a trip um, coming up uh, this April to Europe, um, a tour trip. Um, we have attempted to run a Dominican Republic service trip, which was a repeat of a successful service trip in 2017, I believe. Um, so we thought, um, you know, post-pandemic uh, era, that we would kind of start with something that had been successful and popular with students in the past. We had relatively low enrollment for that trip, um, probably because of a few different variables, one being that um, since it was scheduled for June, it eliminated seniors. Uh, for instance, these students that I have with me tonight wouldn't be able to go because they will have graduated in high school um, and some other variables. So uh, EF had to cancel the trip. They couldn't pair us with uh, schools that were sizable enough to fill uh, buses and things like that, um, which is unfortunate. Um, so we regrouped. Um, I collected data from students in grades 8 to 11, um, which is obviously our target demographic for next year. Learned some interesting things, one of which was uh, Thailand seemed to be the most appealing possibility to them. Um, and, you know, asked them a lot of questions to kind of break down, get more of a sense of where they were. We also learned that uh, they, it wasn't totally clear to them what service learning was, so we have to do a better job, you know, explaining the nature of and value of service learning. So we uh, have been talking to EF, Ms. Tonelli and I will be meeting with them on Tuesday uh, to iron out hopefully some details, but we're asking for a school committee approval to uh, begin planning a service trip to Thailand in April of 20, what is it, 24, 24. 24, thank you. Um, so next April vacation. Um, it would be 10 days and fall along the vacation uh, in April break. Uh, so we double checked the calendar, the post calendar, and it should be kind of nested over those days. Um, with many of these trips, they can never guarantee you an exact flight, you know, so there can be a little bit of overlap with school, but they try to minimize that as much as possible. So, um, it's my hope that we can, you know, reinstall the service trip um, as kind of a a rhythmic and predictable thing for families to look forward to because I think um, getting kids in that type of um, experience um, at this age is a really formative thing for kids. Um, and I want to keep the ball rolling, so we're going to try it again. So I just have one question. Do we, well, two questions, I guess. Do we have another non service trip planned for that year? Great question. Because uh, my, and this is just a concern because I, I went through this one yeah. before COVID. I had a, yeah. a student 
that wanted to do this, and it was tough for them to pick one or the other. So has there been a thought to maybe do alternate years based on that? Yeah, so um, that's a great question, and I should have mentioned that. So we have decided based on our demographic, our population, uh, consulting with EF, that that is the best solution okay. potentially for our school, which is to um, alternate. Okay. So one international trip per year, um, alternating between service and tour. Okay. In the hopes that, you know, maybe someday we could fit more in, but that um, financially, uh, population-wise, timing-wise, uh, that that might be a better fit for us. Um, one per year. Any other questions? I have one. Um, first, let me thank you. So my daughter was on your Dominican Republic trip however many years ago it was, and it was amazing, and I felt really bad when I heard that it needed to be canceled because it was really incredible. Um, but I just had a question. So for service learning, there also is some um, opportunity to get volunteer hours. So I wondered if that could just be talked about because there may be yes. students who would be interested in doing the trip and also recognizing that they could get some of their community service hours. Yes, um, and that was in the uh, survey too. Um, I didn't want to quiz them, but I did ask, are you aware that there's a, a requirement and how many hours do you think it is to determine what their awareness level was of that, and it was, you know, a little iffy <laughs> even there. So um, that's another thing we have to reinforce, and that, um, you know, I think um, they get, uh, depending on the exact package that we choose, it's usually, you know, it can be up to 30 something hours, mm -hmm. which is significant. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really high quality, um, authentic service, too. Um, so I agree, we need to broadcast that a mm -hmm. little bit more. Especially for students who are, um, you know, not only do we expect all students to get community service, but if they are in any part of an organization, you know, maybe some of the AP clubs and different things, they are required to get additional. So that's a lot of community service. So um, one trip, and I agree with you, um, I remember just my daughter's work in the Dominican Republic was well worth every penny we spent for her to go, so. Yeah. It's a foreign travel, therefore it's out of state, requires school committee approval. I would recommend um, um, the Thailand 2024 trip for known high school students as published and recommended by Dr. Kiefer. Any other questions or comments? I entertain a motion to approve 2024 trip to service trip to Thailand. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Congratulations. Thank you. Have fun. Have fun. Thanks. Have fun. If you need a uh, talk item. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next is uh, Mr. Frank Durant from Norton Parks and Recreation. You know, after that's the hiking accident. What's that? The pinky. Oh, yeah, broken ski. Oh, okay. Could have been worse. Good times. Thank you for having me. My name is Frank Durant. I'm currently the director of Fox Recreation for 12 more days. Um, I'm here today to ask to see if we could actually have Founders Day 2023 this summer on June 24th, which is the last Saturday of the month. Uh, with that said, someone will be in my place next month, hopefully, if uh, you guys have a chance to talk with Norton Youth Soccer and approve having Founders Day at the Norton Middle School. Uh, as you know, the days of having this behind the yellow are over. Uh, Norton Middle School is the perfect place in town to have any event because one, you got the square footage, and two, you guys have the parking. So that's why we have elections here because you can't have it at a town hall. Uh, I've tried looking at multiple conservation lands, but in reality, this is the perfect place to have it if I decide to continue with having Founders Day in the future. So that is the main reason why I'm here tonight to answer your questions and see if this is something we could work toward. Have you, or I, I guess, my concern right off the bat is um, what do the logistics of this look like as far, because I know there's a fireworks display, that's my primary concern to be completely honest, because we've had issues in the past with that event. Um, so I know you've met with fire or Norton Fire, 
where do they envision this potential fireworks show? With your permission, I do want to cover that first issue that you brought up. But I did come down with a member of the North Fire Department. There is enough square footage to have a fire truck way in the back. Well, we consider the north end of the soccer fields because it's way up against the perimeter. Out so back or down below? Out where my so where's the soccer fields? Right behind. Okay, right, right, right that way. Sorry. So I've only been in town since 2015. So when it comes to having the fireworks and the fire department present with enough square footage, it gives half the field's availability so people could actually pop, still park on the main, I want to call it the halftime uh, half line, which is halfway of the, all the uh, four soccer fields together. So it's wonderful to have a fireworks display if you decide to have that because the fireworks are literally happening right above you. Uh, we can't have it on the east side because that bridge would not be able to carry an ambulance or a fire truck over that little uh, bridge possum. Um, that's if we want to consider having the fireworks on a different location at the middle school, but the fire department said you're perfect to have it back there. It's enough square footage, so it's not going to have any issues of having anything catch on fire. Um, the first part of that question, um, I was not here in 2018, yeah. but for what had happened, we don't have to go into details, but I think it's important for a uh, role of leadership, me being the director of this department, that I apologize right now to the school committee, to the school department, its faculty and staff, because what occurred, the schools had nothing wrong to do with it. They took the blame, they took the responsibility, and I feel it's important that although late to the game, I'm here to apologize for what happened because it happened on school property, but it was a town issue with the individual and the, uh, the contract that we did with the fireworks. Now, if you want to get into that, we could have a, a light display show and not have fireworks. That could be part of the agreement. Um, and I agree with this entire school committee that we should not have a blanket policy covering the insurance. It should be a contract stating if anything goes wrong, these are the rules and responsibilities, and the town department needs to abide by that. So I'm 100% on the school committee if they request that as a needed to be to have the event. Um, so where, I, I, and I know you're leaving, so where is the planning process for this stand right now? Like, it's not stand still. We have locations. There's no location. There's no Founders Day. As of right now, Founders Day, I hate to say COVID killed a lot of things, and one of them was Founders Day. So if it comes back, it's going to look completely different from what it looked like in the past. I personally, I've talked to members, several members of the committee. Um, the VFW, Gary, the VFW, members of the Veterans Association, they would love to have a collaboration and also have a carnival. So whether they do it with us or not, they're probably going to be here asking for permission to have a carnival fundraiser for the VFW. We could see a partnership with there's a Founders Day event, fireworks, light show, a carnival, and I'd like to see more education with the police and fire. So besides the touch a truck program, I remember the fire department one year lit a whole building on fire to show exactly what the fire department are capable of, um, of rescue. So to have collaboration where expenses could be cut back, but also have it more, not just fun and games, but also an education side, I welcome that collaboration. But to be fair for this uh, new director coming on, whether or not you give permission, it's a good 90 days to plan that out. So I would even love to have more of a school involvement since it is on school property. So it's up to the uh, new director and this committee which way they want to go down. So did did Norton Youth Soccer sign off on this? And they have not. I understand they have a lease currently during that time period. So would we have to go to them? Or yeah, so this is a little complicated, right? Um, a couple of different things. You've provided permission for the use of those fields under the concept of um, unless it's athletics, our athletic programs, Northern Youth Soccer uses the fields and we don't typically quote rent it out to anybody else because in return, they're the ones putting in the manpower, volunteering and paying the bills, right? Um, we wouldn't be able to cut it the way it's cut. Um, water that's there, um, you know, they, they pay the electrical bill which is minimal for the year at one time type of thing. So. As I said to Frank when I mentioned to uh, talk to Frank about this, I think the, the issue here has to be very much what I would have done if the Yelp was still available. And that is I would have recommended a very specific contract where the town has to stand up and fix whatever gets broken. Mm -hmm. um, we can't have third parties provide the school committee and the children <coughs> of Norton and anyone else that's using our fields a group that's being provided and putting in money which, by the way, comes through fundraising, comes through in-kind donations, and so on, and then turn that around, and if they put a fire truck in the middle of it, I've got, and it rained the day before, we've got these divots in the middle of it. There has to be some type of understanding from the town side um, that, that if it's used as a town situation, that it needs to be returned to um, its status as a 
um, its, original state. its original state. Now, what does that mean? Well, like I just said, it depends on the weather, right? Number one, it depends on what is going to go out there. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, if for example we have hot dog trucks or carnival-like foods, if you will, um, they're probably not going to be on that field, but they're probably going to be some type of an entrance way going back there. Um, so it needs to be, it, there's a little bit more detail, Frank and I have had this discussion, there needs to be some real discussion about what does this Founders Day event financially look like and will the town potentially offset costs through liability insurance, as an example, um, to make sure that, that the fields are returned to their proper. My, my biggest concern is always going to be my students using that for gym class, our partnership with Norton Youth Soccer, and making sure that we are certifiably 1,000% able to say that on that Monday morning, somebody is giving us a certificate that that place is as clean from any potential uh, situation uh, or damage, right? The other part of it that's interesting, and I haven't found this out for you yet, and I apologize, um, in, 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 although I think we have some time, and that is if you've provided a uh, recurring uh, use of facilities to North Youth Soccer in return for their keeping it up and utilizing it. Does the school committee have a commitment to them and can't allow somebody else on? So I'd like the opportunity to send that above my pay grade and get an answer for you if that's okay. Um, it shouldn't be overly expensive because I know that the school committees do this all the time. At the same time, of course we all want to be supportive of a good event for the community. I, I don't want to be, I mean we get enough of the arrows thrown at us for not being supportive. Um, with certain populations in town, which is fine. I mean, I get it. It's all about the the public relations part of it. So, um, and now we, I don't even know if they've hired your position yet. I so, actually leave here for the select board meeting to be introduced to her. Okay. So she starts uh, February the 9th. February the 9th. Uh, so yeah. there's still time to have a few meetings before that to come to a conclusion. Right. And and the committee hasn't heard from the one soccer, which I think you would want to have yeah. them be able to yeah. reach out and have their say on what they think. Is the problem with soccer that they would be using it at the same time or that they would? So that's one of the questions I would have is that we're talking it's open. So now it is June 24th. We have a date here now. Mm -hmm. um, the carnival is going to the Yelp School. It's going to be coming before you for oh. um, the 12th of June to the 19th, opening up on the 15th, I believe it is, or the Wednesday of that week. Um, and we can do that. We can move our buses and all that stuff, and it won't. It won't we're not worried about that because it's a whole different animal down there. They've already looked at the square footage for the rides and all of that, even with the new solar panels. Can we um, just move the soccer over to? Yeah. If the if if, if the one thing was we have a plan, if something happens, there is a third party that's picking up the tab for bringing those fields up to up to status. Then of course we could allow for making sure that on on that date that Norton Youth Soccer has full complimentary no charge of our new athletic complex for that weekend for practices and or games. Well, but the only nice. thing is, I would say, if, if there is damage and they have to fix it and we have to move the soccer to people, then I would expect we would get compensation for non-rental. Well, that, and that's so the thing. The, 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 the right. thing is that we want to use these. <coughs> the biggest piece here is you have, prior to me, other than Dr. Hansen, an agreement of Norton Youth Soccer because the fields weren't being kept to the place that they needed to be. So that agreement, I, I don't know if it costs six figures or five figures or one figure. My, my point is, they're the best looking natural fields in town, hands down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My natural field at the high school that we had was never like this. Mm -hmm. So they definitely are putting in the time, the effort, the volunteer work and money, money. In, into it. Yeah. So, uh, so it, it's, uh, it, that's my concern because, boy oh boy, I think it's hard to have volunteers. Volunteers mm -hmm. and people put in stuff. And, we sound like the bad people because we don't want to have quote you know we don't want to have Founders Day. That's not true. We just need a nice, clean way of doing it. One way is to make sure that the insurance binder, which the town would have to take, specifically notes Norton Middle School, the town of Norton, and those fields, right? Specifically notes the fields, so that if in fact there are there are damages, the town's committee is picking up the liability. Uh, uh, payment, which is usually around $5,000, if I remember correctly, for all the other things that we've had, and not a student department 
issue, not, not to nickel and dime, but we want to follow the rules like we would with anybody else. And then what would be the turnaround time to make sure this fix? If, if it all of a sudden is a bunch of mud out there, then you know, you know, youth soccer could be looking at an entire season of not playing there because you have to regrade it, reseed it, right? So I, I know I, I can speak to the fact because I, I have volunteered to be a part of that Founders Day committee for six or seven years. Um, you know, there were mornings where we had torrential downpour and yeah. then the sun came out and all was good, but yeah. it is wet. Oh, yeah. It is wet. We have rides going out there. We have cars going out there. You know, the behind the you know your office, yeah. The, yeah. it did get ruined because yeah. of stuff going back there. So, you know, there's a lot of moving parts to this, and, and luckily I have some insight into it. Mm -hmm. But it is not. I don't know if you have any money left in the budget from when it was run years ago, but it takes a tremendous amount of money to oh, run yeah. that event. Um, so fundraising alone. You know, is you know, you're leaving. Somebody new is coming, and they're just going to jump in and and get all the fundraising done. I mean, it's just, you know, I would love to have it, but I, I really need to talk to Norton Youth Soccer because it's it's their it's their money. So, it's, uh, I don't Mr. Want to Chairman, talk. you have a number. And then, who? I mean, I don't know. Uh, when looking at Saturday morning soccer at 9 a.m., mm -hmm. I don't know who said Founders Day we're going to have enough parking at this place. Where would the park on the field? Because if you think you're parking that many people in this parking lot, it's actually that's not happening. Those, those, those lots are packed for some reason. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, people are they're they're all the way down the road, yeah. back to back. Like now, I mean, that's that's a kids that are five and six and seven in the mornings. You know, mm -hmm. now you're looking at an entire town. You know, where now you're not just looking at people with kids. You're looking at you know, mm -hmm. seventy five year old grandparents coming too. I I don't know where like. You're putting all those cars at this at this place. You, now you want to use the church and bus people from, you know, JCS or the high school and stuff. Or mm -hmm. that's a different story. But if you think you're parking that many cars at North Middle School and then having a big event out there, that's well, that's what we had. I mean, when we did it, people parked at the high school. But you so, had yeah, people they parking. walked over. Yeah, yeah they walked over from the high. But they didn't park at the Yale. They parked at the high school, and people parked at you know the senior yeah. center behind the senior center. People yeah. walked VFW all along. Road. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they would park mm -hmm. down there. So so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think these are all good points that need to be ironed out. Mm -hmm. I, and historically, so I was an NYS board member building these fields, and to your point, it was well over six figures year over year. Um, so I have a soft spot for these fields. Um, historically, at least the spring season for North East Soccer is done, I believe, at that point, and the teams that are in the playoffs are playing. Mm -hmm. However, in that time frame, you also run into summer league, um, for the high school boys and girls out there, you have summer camp for NYS. So if there's any major damage, mm -hmm. to your point, regrading everything, then we, that we, you know, having been a former director of the soccer camp, that's 200 kids over two weeks that we welcome here. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all concerns and all things that need to be addressed. But I believe uh, NYS is here. Yeah, uh, Pat Malou from North New Soccer. Hey, how you doing? So, you know, points have been made. You know, similar to what, what I have here. So we spend in, in excess of like thirty-five thousand dollars a year to maintain the fields, mm -hmm. and that's on a regular basis where we don't have to overhaul an entire field. To overhaul an entire field, it's anywhere from like eight to ten thousand, and then we have to stay off of that particular part of the field mm -hmm. for an entire season, whether it be spring or fall. So as uh, Mr. Sheehy brought up before, after Founders Day, just because North Youth Soccer their season, their spring season is done doesn't mean we, have, we don't have other things going on. You brought up uh, our green summer summer league that we have uh, that we maintain on that field, mm -hmm. and then we also have the camps that they that they mentioned as well. Right. So and and we're going into if if you saw what the fields looked like in the middle of the summer last year, they we're done. they got beat up yeah. in that summer. So never mind having you know damage from whatever carts go out there during Father's Day. So right. you know. Serious well, concerns about my goal tonight is not so much hey let's bring out Founders Day or to have the event. I want this to be a win-win for the community. So whatever the outcome would be, I wouldn't accept it unless it's a win-win. Meaning, if it's not going to work out for all parties, then that's not where I stand. So, but at the same time, though, parking is an issue. But wherever else, there's no other place really to have it, and I've looked at multiple areas. So, including the high school, there's not enough room square footage as well as parking. So, like I said back in the day, there was. Problem then will be a problem now. Yeah. So. What about Everett Leonard? Yeah, I was just thinking that. I think the only no thing parking, parking. No parking. Yeah, no, but you're not. But here's the thing is, is you're going to run into a parking issue. It doesn't matter where you go in town. Unless Wheaton's going to open up. 
Mm. It's that simple. You're going to run into a parking issue. You're going to be able to fit more cars here than you would be at an average line. That's an easy one. Mm. But if you're busing people regardless, mm. what is the difference? You're just busing more people. From if you include the parking lot and all the way to the end of the pool, surrounded by conservation, and you do the necessary, I think, 400 yards, you're literally laying the fireworks under the pavilion. So the big thing when you're putting in the back, you have enough square footage from the woods, from the field to where the audience would be. So legally standard, the fire department says the back of the northern, uh, back of the northern soccer field would be perfect. Technically, I said, hey, could we have it behind the high school? And they said, not enough square footage to have fireworks. Now that's if Founders Day includes the fireworks portion, as opposed to I have to find a different location to have the fireworks. There is conservation land behind the JC settlements. It won't, won't be the same. We'll pay people to be parking on the side of the street, or people be parking in the, in the lot of the middle school to see the fireworks mile down the road, that's a possibility. Like I said, my goal is win-win. So that, that's a possibility, but like I said, right now it comes down to square footage of parking, so the middle school is would be ideal for that. Well, I mean, you know, personally, I think the biggest question mark for tonight for me is if, if we're doing fireworks, that's one potential issue, or if we do a light show, I think there's less, I don't wanna say less liability, but that's my concern is what we had with the fireworks previously. You know, I think there's still an issue of, you know, use of the fields for a light show. I mean, a lot of people sitting versus, you know, fireworks getting shot off is a lot of different, you know, two different things for me. So, um, you know, I, I think there, we have more questions than answers tonight. So I think maybe for me personally, I think we need to uh, see a little bit better of a plan, which might fall to your successor versus you. Um, if she has some plans, if you know, we have a discussion with NYS um, and kind of revisit this, you know, maybe in a, in a month or two um, and see what this looks like. Because I don't want to say yes for, and then have, um, you know, issues that we can't account for, liability that we can't account for. You know, we obviously have discussions with the town regarding the liability issues as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I just think there's a, there's a little bit more, um, you know, questions to be answered before um, before I would say yes or no. Here's just a, a question and a thought that I was just having. So, looking at Everett Leonard, like if I, and I know that parking's an issue, but just thinking if we could have people somehow come in, you know, we've done it before, right, with busing people in. But what about having the fireworks shot off from somewhere else, hmm. right? Like the water department, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got a lot of open space back there because growing up in Plymouth, we never had fireworks literally lit off where people were sitting. Right. You could still light them off, like at the at the yeah. water department. Mm -hmm. What are you laughing at? I said, Nick and I look at each other going, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> Sometimes the blondes have good ideas. I don't know what to tell you. I, on the record, you said that, and I did not insinuate that in any way, shape, But it's just maybe something that we need to think of, because Everett is a great spot, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people don't even know we have a town pool, so it might be beneficial to Park and Rec to have kind of like a introduction, you know, this is what the town has, mm -hmm. and then still be able to have fireworks and shoot them off from the wide department. Not really a question there, but the comment was, I agree with the comment. So bring that up to the new director, I would say. Mm -hmm. well, no, I, there, there are other places we could launch fireworks off at the E3 Connect Conservation Lab behind uh, J.C. Solomon. So there, there is a chance for that. But yeah. people can park on 123, they can park anywhere and just watch the fireworks above. So that is still, that's a possibility of, as part of the contract that we get out of the Founders Day event, but the fireworks have to be at a different location. Yeah, I just think having Founders Day back where if it's going to be a park and rec event, mm -hmm. having it on park and rec land might be a nice idea. I just, I, I definitely am concerned about the soccer, mm -hmm. the amount that these guys have put into the field, and because I know, I mean, we've been there, Nick, on some of those rainy days where we're like, oh God, how is this truck going to get out of this grass? Yeah. You know, we've been there. Yeah. You know, so. Everett Lynn is owned by the Control by Conservation, though, but still, it's, it's a possibility. Yeah. I mean, they. Everything's talk. controlled by conservation. Yeah, it, seriously. I mean, that's that. That, that shouldn't be an issue, though. Honestly, no. I mean, it's, no. if it's not an issue, if it wasn't an issue for the schools all those years doing it, it really shouldn't be an issue for them. I would, I would argue the point with them. Yeah, I think. Not. I mean, to chairperson's uh, suggestion here is, I mean, I think we need to have a kind of sit down conversation with a little bit more of parties involved. Right. You know, yeah. but we're, we're dealing with hypotheticals here. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're kind of beating around the yeah. bush here that. I don't think I'm at all ready to say yes. Now I'm locked in. Let's go. So yeah, yeah. Can and I, I think can you, I yeah. suggest so to
to Nick's, to Nick's point, like, we're dealing with hypotheticals here. It's almost like we're trying to plan Founders Day as we're sitting here. <laughs> so what I would suggest is um, everybody kind of go back to the corners. And it sounds like we have four stakeholders here, right? We have Parks and Recs, we have Norton Soccer, we have schools, and we have the town itself. Maybe everybody kind of go back to the corner and determine what it is that they, what their expectation is out of this. The schools expect you know, liability to cover, et cetera, et cetera. The, you know, Parks and Recs needs this, this, and this. If it's going to be back here, Norton News Soccer expects this, this, and this, and the town is willing to do this, 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 and then come together and see what we have. Because right now, again, we're, we're just kind of shooting, you know, shooting blanks in the dark. This is it's, it's under the okay. Okay. Good. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Good luck. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, so the next is Norton High School track proposal. As uh, as uh, get our guests to come up I just want to uh, inform the committee um, that this has gone through a formal process um, what you're hearing tonight is the originator of, of the recommendation the recommendation was presented to the site council of Norton High School which is your local policy process um, it was unanimously supported there so that's teachers parents and students that sit on that and um, and tonight we have the presentation and you have the recommendation of the high school principal as well. Okay, take it away. All right, I'm gonna start. Um, Jake did an unbelievable job putting all of this together, so thank you, Jake, for doing that. But I just wanted to say something quick. Um, I think some people are looking at this and saying this is, we're, we're gonna dedicate the track to the coach. I don't look at it that way. We're ded dedicating it to the, the track coach an amazing teacher, someone who's been an inspiration to all the students of Norton High for the past 17, 18 years, and truly is just a really good person, a great person. So I think that's, and it's perfect, brand new track. It's the right time to do it. So I'm gonna let Jake take it from there. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Jake Antosca. Um, I'm a senior at Norton High School, and uh, I've been on the track team for four years, and. Um, this spring I'll be going on three years as captain of the boys track and field team. But like uh, Mr. Sumner said, I'm not here to talk about myself, rather a man who, uh, who's inspired the high, high school as a whole. Um, in the spring of 2020, beloved coach and teacher of Norton High School, Mr. Kent Taylor, uh, was diagnosed with a grade four glioblastoma tumor with an ID, IDH gene mutation, which is the most aggressive form of brain cancer. Um, while at Norton, Mr. Taylor has served as the high school's English department head, English teacher, head coach of the boys and girls cross country team, and co-head of the boys and girls indoor and outdoor track and field teams. Furthermore, uh, Coach Taylor has served as the Massachusetts State Track Coaches Association Director of Communications and Social Media, as well as uh, a media specialist for um, running, uh, a running media center, uh, Bay State Running. Considering his extensive successful resume as a result of his coaching and teaching career at Norton High School, I've chosen to communicate to the, public, the Norton Public School Committee to propose the most appropriate opportunity of naming the new track within the high school's new athletic complex after Mr. Kent Taylor. I must emphasize Mr. Taylor's impact on Norton High School, the respective cross country and track and field teams in the community of Norton should not be defined by his accolades but rather his character. Mr. Taylor has established and continues to develop a contagious, influential, and inspirational atmosphere within the walls of the high school. The number of individuals Mr. Taylor has emotionally impacted is truly incomprehensible. You may ask past, past or present students, but it will be hard to find an individual who's not been impacted by the kindness, charisma, and compassion that Mr. Taylor, uh, Mr. Taylor has infused with high school's community. Those who know him best have seen that his incredible sense of humor and devotion to his students and athletes. Whether on the track or in the classroom, Mr. Taylor continuously motivates and encourages his students and athletes to achieve their best. Nevertheless, he has advocated for the best academic and athletic success for all of those who have attended the high school. It is clearly evident that Mr. Taylor's unconditional support and willingness to meet everyone with kindness or assistance is what, what, is what propels him into the easily recognizable teacher, coach, colleague, and friend of Norton High School. As a coach, Mr. Kent Taylor has comprised an illustrious career during his time at Norton. Although his championship, championships and awards seem endless, Mr. Taylor continues to credit his athletes as the reason for his success. 
In efforts to express his success, please acknowledge the following, as Ms. Kent, Mr. Kent Taylor has been an essential part of each accomplishment for the cross country and track and field teams. As you can see, Mr. Mr. Kent Taylor has a wide variety of accomplishments, whether he's done them by himself or through his uh, cross country and track teams. During and after his diagnosis treatment, Coach Taylor has coined the mantra Carpe Diem. In Latin, the proverb translates to seize the day. His, catch, his catchphrase has become a way of life not only for himself, but for Norton High School. This un unfortunate event has shown many the fragility of life. With this, he has advocated to his students, athletes, and colleagues to strive for their long-dreamed goals. Subsequently, his overarching message of Carpe Diem is to appreciate the blessing in which we call life. Unfortunately, Mr. Taylor has seen and been through the unthinkable. However, persevered with his infectious yet inspirational carpe diem mindset and outlook on life. So now I call upon you, the Norton Public School Committee, to please act upon this most appropriate occasion to please consider titling the new Norton High School track and field facility after Mr. Kent Taylor. As he's provided so much to the high school and the students and families of the town of Norton. Personally, I would like, to, I would like Mr. Taylor to see this happen, to know he will, be a, he will forever be taken care of to know his impact on Norton as a whole will eternally be etched, no matter what life throws at him. To assure him the students, athletes, and colleagues, past, present, and future, appreciate all that he has done for Norton High School, and to signify to him Norton High School loves him. This dedication would serve as a tremendous expression of gratitude towards Mr. Taylor, as he undoubtedly deserves the reciprocal amount of kindness in which he expresses to others. Thank you. So can I just say, I've known Jake since he was a little kid, so I am not surprised at all that you are spearheading this and um, presented beautifully. I hope I can get through this without crying. <clears throat> I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. You had me at Ken Taylor. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, this is a uh, unique situation, right? Uh, but this is also uh, unique because of where it's coming from, a student athlete. Uh, that's not usually how the naming of things happen, right? It's usually all this other adult stuff, and I know he's being supported by adults. But um, he has been, uh, he, he won't take a note for this. Uh, he has been working on this uh, for a while, um, working um, the politics of how to get in front of you, right? I hate to say it that way, but the process, um, that it's not just, you know, comes out of the whim. Your policy establishes a process to get named and you folks up or down it. There is no other criteria that you have uh, in that process. So you are open to decide and vote tonight or take it under advisement if you, if you so um, uh, wish um, and move on the recommendation that is coming from the site council, the high school principal, and the superintendent of schools. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have, we've had this discussion. Um, ironically, my, my daughter, I was talking to her about it, she's like, just let the students handle it. So my daughter was aware of the work you were doing. So I'm like, all right, because again, it comes from those who love him the most. Um, I have not had an athlete under Kent Taylor yet. My youngest is there's still hope. Um, but I've had one that had him as a teacher. So um, he's infectious. He really is. Um, I remember seeing him at, I think it was parent-teacher conferences. My, my own kid didn't even have him. He was in the middle of his thing, sees me walking by, stops, runs out, hugs me, how you doing? Um, and that's just the kind of guy he is. So for me, this, I, I don't really have anything else to say. I don't know if the committee has anything. I'm ready to, ready to vote on it right now. So just a couple of thoughts. Um, first of all, if you're not taking no, I have good news for you for me at least. Um, <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's funny because Joe and I actually had this conversation I mean, it might have been the day after they approved the VAC, to be honest with you. Yeah. And we were talking about, hey, you know, what about this? Can we, can we do this? Um, and I've had, from that time to tonight, I've had other people approach me and, and ask about this. Right. As recently as a couple of weeks ago, um, one of my neighbors asked me about it. He had, um, he had a daughter who had a, had a promising high school gymnastics career, which is close to my heart, and she left it to go run for Kent Taylor. <laughs> and while I was hurt, I was happy for her. <laughs> And her dad, and, and she's long gone. She went on to, to run D1. And, and she, you know, she's long gone, and her dad had reached out to me and said, hey. And, and he's talked to me about, about Coach Taylor multiple times, um, just seeing how's he doing, what he hearing, et cetera. Um, it, it's funny. If, if you know him, 
you're a fan. Yeah. You know, that's it. And with respect to what Aaron was saying, anybody who thinks this is just we're naming after a coach, they don't know Ken Taylor. Yeah. That's that. It's as simple as that. They just don't know the guy. Um, you know, so for me, I, I, I've always kind of thought this was a little bit of a fait accompli, quite honestly. And I, I would, I would just say in closing, I would, I would strongly urge everybody to go yes for this tonight. Yeah. And, and by the way, does he know we're doing this? Yeah, that was my next one. Okay, so um, he is my employee, um, so I did have a sidebar with him um, okay. to make sure. So you couldn't um, keep a secret? Gotcha. No, not <laughs> that. I, I don't think, uh, I can't speak for the committee, but I can because I don't, I don't know how you're going to vote. I didn't call you and say, hey, you're going to vote yes or no on that. That's not what I do. Um, but I wanted him to make sure that if there was any discussion or so on that he was hearing it from me first before he heard it from someone else. And I said, I don't think it's a problem. I'd be shocked but I can't speak for the committee it's your decision it's a policy issue have you talked to him at all Jake about it mm -hmm. no no okay. uh, I have I actually forgot to mention I have 70 signatures basically the whole high school uh, that have supported it <laughs> <laughs> I love it I mean I this is you read them off please <laughs> one by one um, and you're, you're welcome to give us a copy of that to enter into the record and it'll be in the record of the agenda for the rest of the history of Lawn public schools what's so your what's the vision in terms of the dedication is it like a ceremony are we putting his name somewhere what is kind of I guess yeah that? Maybe that we've been talking we've talked about, about you know I think what some schools do is they put the name on the track they're like you actually paint it on the track um, I have some other ideas too but yeah. me and Jake are going to talk about it so. yeah it's typically something like that a name goes somewhere and then using some type of a plaque in the vicinity if you remember the uh, um, Coach Coleman, the Coach Coleman um, you have the uh, 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 student services office downstairs is a sign yeah. it's named and then there's a plaque that goes with it so we'll, we'll put a working committee of people if it's a positive vote we'll get a group of people specifically through you um, since you've done all the work and get some art, artist perspectives on what's the best way to do it and we, then we had a few of them earlier so yes <laughs> I think it'd be nice though if it, you know obviously when this gets voted um, that we think about maybe some kind of a, a party or something right? typically there's a dedication with some yeah. type of a so they'll they'll be a set up it'll be probably yeah, an, after, an, it's probably an evening event on the field itself where the location is going to be the unveiling inviting friends family the community that wants to come out yeah. the student body and then um, you know uh, you know cookies and that type of thing right. and then and then go from there it's usually to be quite honest it's usually very large and a lot of people come or it's very family oriented and only a few people come just because people have been gone for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will be well attended. Yeah. I don't yeah. doubt it. I'm surprised. Yes. I think yeah. it would be nice though for Kent though if people yeah. were able to come and, yeah. and tell them what exactly he's meant to them. Yeah. I think yeah. that would be really yeah. special. That's an idea yeah. is maybe try and connect with some previous people and get like uh, what Kent did for me and present that. To I know I've uh, collaborated with uh, uh, Mr. Brian Gannon, he's an assistant yeah. coach on the yeah. team, and we've talked about maybe uh, bringing back the alumni meet, um, getting past students to come, That'd like cool. just talk to him really, mm -hmm. just see how he's doing, um, thank him and everything, as a way to just commemorate. Right. The We're already planning the party. Yeah. 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 So yeah. once you vote, um, what we'll do is we we'll put together <laughs> through Jake and, and Aaron really and Ethan as the principal, and then get some more adults and, and students involved mm -hmm. and put together a little working committee, if you will, yep. establish a date of dedication and ceremony, be, so that we have enough time to get things. I'm thinking probably into the late spring when the weather is probably going to be to our benefit, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, getting invitations out and all of that stuff. So we'll definitely do it right. Great. Aaron, I Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I said Aaron made me feel old. You were like, oh, 17 or 18 years. Mr. Taylor's first year was my senior year. We had, <laughs> um, we had him for English, and I'm like, no, it's actually longer than that, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And now we're in the junior year back in 0304. I was 04. You got it. I just wanted to also make a point that, um, so Dan, sort of like you, my children, um, two who have already graduated and one currently, um, never had Mr. Taylor as a teacher, nor did they ever have him as a coach. So, um, but I think since his diagnosis, he has been so open and compassionate about um, sort of life and really enjoying life that I think so many kids. So now it's no longer just sort of his students within his classroom or on the track. Um, it's really sort of, I think, kind of broadened over the whole entire community of Norton High School. So whether you've had him as a teacher or not, I think he kind of is known 
in that building as somebody who's inspirational and, and really caring. So I can't imagine that there's, you know, children who now don't know Mr. Taylor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in the past there were students who really didn't know him, but I think everybody knows him now. Yeah. And I think that's sort of kudos to who he is as a person to be really willing to um, kind of recognize the value of each other and uh, sort of building a community in that school. So thank you, Jake. You did a lovely job. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, entertain a motion to approve the dedication proposal as presented. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Great job, Jake. Great job, Jake. Congratulations. Thank you for doing that. Nice job. Uh, we're going to transition, Mr. Chairman, with some technology stuff. Sure. The train coming up. Jake, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, while we're transitioning, if I may, um, we um, we have our final big project if we will presentation tonight by our colleagues um, from train that are here. So um, we're going to do another minute to get folks out and then we'll turn it over for formal introductions and then their presentation to you folks. In the <clears throat> While we're doing this um, with train, the same thing that we did with the athletic complex, um, you got to remember that your director of facilities has been dealing with two major multi-million dollar projects for the last year plus. Um, so I just want to formally, uh, and I've done this at the athletic complex, but really um, Wade Lazard has been the key person on this project. Uh, General Neal has been part of it as well as she's learning some of the project stuff. Uh, but Wade, thank you so much for your leadership on this. And then lastly, Christine, who's picked up all of the contractual obligations and payments and all that stuff that goes with it. I'd like to publicly thank her as well. So I'll turn it over to who's ever starting the introductions. Thank you so much to Mr. Chairman and the committee and Dr. Bea for introducing us. Uh, my name is Morgan Paris from TRAIN. I am an Energy Services Account Executive with TRAIN and here are my two colleagues. Uh, my name is Craig Anderson. I was a project manager here for, uh, for TRAIN. Um, took care of uh, the bulk of the day-to-day -day responsibility stuff that went on with the uh, construction throughout the project. Now, Mark Holinsky, I'm the uh, operations manager. I had uh, full responsibility of the, the project from start to finish. And today we'll be talking about, um, I'll recap the process in the, in the project, um, the specific scope of work uh, that Norton Public School selected, and then we'll go through a bunch of successful before and after pictures that I hope will be pretty exciting in communicating uh, the success of the project. So we'll dive right in as a recap. What is performance contracting? It's when you accumulate and monetize future energy savings to pay for a project up front. And that's building upgrades such as HVAC, controls, building envelope, et cetera. Solar in this case as well. So it is an alternative procurement and contracting method from what you know, Massachusetts is typically used to. Um, it's enabled by MGL Chapter 25A 11I. And it is where you can uh, take one qualified firm to provide the design, the installation, the mechanical service, and measurement and verification of savings over up to 20 years. Um, so this project can be funded independent of the capital budget uh, and paid for over time entirely or in part by energy savings. In this case, it was fully. So 25A11I, this is the process that Norton went through. I don't know if you guys can see it's a little bit small now. But um, started in February of 2020 when Norton issued a request for qualifications, an RFQ, which is a model document on the DOER's website. Um, they selected um, TRAIN in October of 2020. So we were selected as your partner energy services company to perform the work. We executed a contract to audit your facilities in December of 2020, and then we presented that phase one project to the CIP um, or the CIC in March of 2021. We started preparing the contract documents in April of 2021, and then uh, received approval at the town meeting for that first phase in May of 2021, and then we went to work and executed the contract in May of 2021 as well. 
Um, since then, we've been working to replace the HVAC, system, HVAC systems, um, install building automation, renewable energy, uh, and a whole slew of other projects. So this details by school building which measure or which scope item was associated with the project. So as you can see, um, three schools got boiler replacements, one with a full steam to hot water conversion and these boilers, new HVAC and controls. Um, other buildings got full new HVAC and controls as well. There was solar at every single one of the school buildings. Um, one got a smaller solar system, but it still has a solar system. We did water conservation measures across all buildings, um, kitchen hood controls, walk-in cooler freezers, so some stuff in the kitchens to just purely save energy, uh, and then some building envelope work as well. And then I'll pass it over to okay. you, you just press the right button. All right. Um, so one of the uh, energy conservation measures we had was replacing boilers. We did. Uh, we did that in um, the middle school as well as uh, the three elementary schools. So this is uh, some before and after of the boilers that you had at the middle school. Um, so you'll see is obviously the old boilers in place here. And then this is the uh, in process of, of being demoed. So there are um, sectional pieces here that um, I'm not sure if this school had to be abated or not. But um, uh, this is uh, them, you know, taking the, the pieces apart, getting it demoed, and then you'll see to the right their new boiler setup. Uh, we've got these new boilers in there, um, and uh, so far so good at, at the middle school. Next is uh, Henry Yell. So these are some before pictures. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice, hopefully, in some of the pictures is some of the footprint that you guys gain as you get um, I think boilers uh, back in the day are sized a little too much, a little oversized. Uh, so we sized the boilers right with you know, just enough uh, uh, over capacity for you. Um, so you'll notice some footprint uh, pick up here. So this is one boiler being demoed, your first beastman that got put in. And then here is your final um, set up over at Yelp. So, um, you know, everything cleaned up nice, nice. We've got two new boilers in here, and uh, so far, so good. Uh, hot water pumps we replaced at the middle school. As you can see, the existing condition of the uh, earlier boilers, or er, er, earlier pumps before we replaced them, we had the new pump setups here. Uh, moving on, uh, we replaced classroom unit vents in all of the elementary schools. There's roughly 107 of them. Um, so they didn't all look like this, but they were similar fashion. Uh, so here at, uh, or over at Yelp, uh, this is an old unit vent. This is another style of older unit vent at Yelp. Um, and then we have the newer um, unit vents here. Uh, the older unit vents um, controls were pneumatic, so you, you got to imagine uh, the accuracy, the, um, the the amount of time that's gone by that you know you just you, they're they're kind of losing what what they're supposed to be doing, bringing in fresh air, heating, um, and now we have new systems here, um, given the the district nice filter uh, schedules so that they know, you know, the size of filters for their equipment and for all the new equipment that we installed. So we've got new filters. Um, we've got uh, automated controls in here. And um, uh, we can move on and talk. When we're ECM getting motors into the and things, so really, yeah. I was going to say, when we get into the control stuff, we kind of get into some of the indoor air quality stuff that you guys can see and start picking up. So again, this is now a decorated new unit then. It didn't take long, but at least the good news is that there's no books or anything that are, that are on top, so that's always a plus. Um, as part of the control system um, and another energy conservation measure is replacing your old pneumatic system. So you have an air compressor that would just keep running 
and you know trying to maintain air. If you had a leak someplace, that thing's just going to keep running and spinning the bill for spinning the, uh, the meter. So we replaced this, replaced all of the pneumatic end devices, namely in the in the elementary schools. Those were the um, pneumatic uh, buildings. So we replaced all the pneumatic valves with uh, electronic valves. We replaced any actuators for dampers that brought in outside air. We replaced those with electronic as well, and then removed and demoed the, uh, the old compressors. So this is an example over a gal of uh, old pneumatic thermostat, and to its side is the, the new train thermostat. They have occupancy sensors as well as um, measure temperature and CO2. So when you're um, it's typically in the morning or after a recess or something like that where you get all the kids leave and then all the kids come back in and the CO2 level in the classroom rises while well, the sensor senses it, brings in, opens the outside air damper and starts bringing fresh air and gets that level back down to you know, under 900 parts per million. Here's uh, some pictures of some of the pneumatic existing panels that you would have had um, that have been replaced now with our, our DVC panels. And again, this was primarily throughout the elementary schools. Um, here at the middle school, you had an old Metasys uh, John, uh, I believe John, Johnson system. So um, didn't really have good graphics. It's just outdated and needed to be uh, brought into the, uh, the modern times here. And that's what we did. So we've essentially taken um, all five of your schools and created, it's, it's, each one will look similar. So somebody can go in from to the high school and look at that system and then go into Yale Elementary and that system to them is gonna be familiar. They're gonna be able to see similar stuff and you'll see when I go through what I'm talking about. So you would log into your ensemble front end. It's a server that all five of the schools are, they have their individual brains that will talk to that. So you log into the ensemble server, and then as you see, each one of the schools has a little, uh, a little uh, uh, square over there that you would click on, and that brings you into that individual school. Um, and the school here, for example, is the middle school. And what we have is floor plan graphics and then breakouts of the different particular systems. You'll have hot water, air handlers, you know, if there's VAV boxes or something like that. Um, and so to drill down even further, as you click on that floor plan, this is an example of one of the floor plans, you'll get just a bird's eye view of that area. So you could come in in the morning, prior to students or anybody coming in, do a quick scan and be able to see that everything's doing what it's supposed to and try to head off maybe any cold calls, hot calls that may be coming in throughout the course of the day. Um, if you were to click on any one of those tabs on the side um, for the hot water system, air handlers, or VNDs, this is what you would see. Here's a, an example of the uh, hot water system graphic for your boilers. Some air handler graphics, things like the feed the cafeteria, um, and then classroom unit events. These are typical graphics. If you were to do this at any one of your schools, they're gonna look like this for the hot water system. Each one may have its own you know, intricacy where it might have more pumps or it might have, you know, a different layout, but it's going to look like that. Same with the air handlers and same with the events. Is that all to be accessed remotely? From yep. yep. So benefits of this project, $12 million in renewable energy systems and facility upgrades, like Art said, it's HVAC systems, controls, it's new pumps, it's new boilers. Um, the project is paid for over time, over the 20 years, it's about $10.4 million in energy savings, and then the new renewable energy credits coming from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts 
are 2.3 million over 20 years. Um, so those will be accumulated starting this year. And then avoiding just millions in capital expenses for the town and the community over the next 20 years. As you can see, this energy reduction from the utility spend in 2019, so even pre-pandemic, to the utility spend with the building improvements and the solar is close to $400,000. Um, so you can see that, that large of a change um, over, over 2019 to now. And then additional benefits. We're generating with that solar 44% of the electricity used by the schools. Um, reducing your energy consumption by almost 30% in total. And you're improving temperature control and ventilation in those classrooms, which is improving indoor air quality, indoor environmental quality, and more. And then you're sustaining that uh, optimal operation through ongoing maintenance with train. So these renewable energy systems, like I said, about 44% of electricity by the schools each year. Um, there's battery storage systems for night, and then electric vehicle charging stations as well. And here is some of the layouts for each of the four schools, J.C. Salmonese, L.G. Norse, Norton High School, and Yale. So these are updated. Um, this is actually what's current in all four of those buildings. And then this is Norton Middle School, which I'll pass it back over to you. So these are our uh, design uh, documents that we had for each one of the carports at those schools. Um, moving through, you're going to uh, start seeing some kind of uh, uh, action photos here of some of the uh, electrical trench work that we had to get done. Um, I can't tell if that's here at the middle school. That's the middle school. Or the high school. That's the middle school. That's the middle school. That's the middle school, definitely. So, um, yeah, so this is getting, you know, just the framework up. Those are the uh, solar inverters there. Uh, uh, next pictures here we're going to get are actually just uh, uh, the carport structure itself being um, up here at the middle school. And then uh, this is with solar panels on. Uh, we're in the process of getting shutdowns, which I think are as soon as this weekend. So we're going to start getting some of the buildings tied in. And uh, we've had some challenges uh, with the solar from um, you know, some of the uh, supply chain issues that we've overcome. Um, and then when we overcame that, we ran into national grid coordination and scheduling, which was, was, was tough, but we got through that. So this is uh, one of your uh, uh, arrays here, at, uh, I'm thinking that one's the high school, um, that uh, it's all lit up and it's just uh, the safety factor having lighting at night when it starts to get dark in the winter time. Thank you. And then just to close, community benefits, I've said it a couple times, but I'll summarize it again. It's just a comprehensive range of facility upgrades and renewable energy that pays for almost 50% um, of your utility usage. You're paying for the project using guaranteed energy savings from Terrain, which means that we monitor and verify each year and give that to you in a report, um, and also incentives from the state as well. You avoid new capital expenses, hopefully you're not going to have to buy new HVAC for a very long time. Uh, you measurably improve the quality of the learning environments through improved indoor air quality. Um, which is shown to improve test scores and more. Um, you green your Norton facilities, reducing utility consumption, and then you can sustain, like I said, that optimal performance with um, maintenance, the train. So, like I said, sustain that performance um, with train. We will maintain your equipment controls. We monitor those systems through our um, building automation system, and we'll just regular ha regularly have people on site. I and mean, we did the installation. This is our equipment. This is our controls. Uh, we're invested in this partnership for the next 20 years. Um, so we will be here measuring, verifying, and reporting those energy savings. Um, and, and Mr. Bayada knows he can call me anytime and help me. <laughs> and that is it. Do you have any questions? I, I have one question. It's just as we were going through, it kind of triggered. In the individual classrooms, can those be, can the temperature be changed? By the teacher, or do they would have to like send a request to you? Like, yep, that comes okay. through uh, in my department, or uh, it will come to the custodial department at each okay. school or through my office. Okay. So we have total range of every single of the 107 unit events. We can adjust each one of those. Uh, every space throughout the schools, even the closets, we, we can control those. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
because I know we had IEP. Yeah, so, so situations like uh, with more and more students having medical issues, I mean, does the, this is not air conditioning, although there's a potential discussion about that down the road that you could have instead of windows, which really are costing us a lot more money than we should have, is, um, is the ability to be able to tell families who have students who have certain uh, issues with their health that we can control certain things within that room. It's not AC, but if that room needs to be closer to 68 than 72, or it needs more airflow on a regular basis, those things can happen um, by going through the process. Well, I mean, I think the other thing too, our, our summer programming has exploded in the yes. last few years, so keeping these a little bit cooler is... You know, well, be I think benefit. between the windows and the HVAC upgrades and getting rid of steam in one of our buildings, I can tell you right now that I, I, there is more consistency. Now, there's still hiccups in the system because we're still going through, you know, different periods of the day in our schools. There's different amount of people in the classroom. One person thinks it's cold. One person thinks it's hot. Even though it's set at 68, I think it's perfect. You think it's cold. So we're still working through that concept. And the other concept, and this is just the way it is, is that, you know, people do want to open a window. Well, that changes everything to do with this system. Or they want to put in a heater. I think we've collected a few heaters this winter um, be, because we can't just, I mean, the fire department doesn't want us to have individual heaters in classrooms to begin with. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's been a fairly mild winter so far. It has, so and that's been, a, that's been a benefit. I mean, the, the only big issue within this project, right, this project is 60% more if we go out right now. 60% more, or it's another seven and a half million bucks. That's number one. Number two, timing is everything. So we got killed with, with the pipeline. Right, the solar panels that have put us behind a little bit with the savings, and so that's why you see an article later on today about the timing of how to pay for this. But but it's not a long-term issue; it's a short-term problem just because of all of this. And to be quite honest, you six months of waiting on a utility company at the beginning of this project and now at the end of this project for them to do one thing: schedule something to close out and allow for us to do the train work so then we can. And I want to publicly thank our state representative, Howard, who took the lead along with Fred Barris uh, and uh, Jay Barris and Senator Feeney. I want to thank uh, him because it was 24 hours later that communication became clear on um, what the yeah. expectation was. Um, so we, we've, we've, we've no, no fault to train at all um, It's you know they, they, if, the, if the equipment isn't coming. Now here's the other part that I think is really important the public needs to know and I know the members, some of the members know. 20 years of commitment and connection between Norton Public Schools. This no, no more three years and who's gonna be the next HVAC technician. These people are dealing with it and you're not getting a bill every day, right? You, you paid for this. You got 20 years of not having to do that on a regular basis. Something breaks down, trains on it. That's their job, that's part of this contract. And so when all the inflation went up, the project remained at $12 million. I wanna say that again because my Unfortunate colleagues who are dealing with MSBA projects, their projects are 20, 30, 40 million dollars in the hole. This project, if we hadn't done this process, would probably be somewhere between five and seven million dollars in the hole. Train had to commit that this is, and they're, they're a big business, they're making money, I'm sure, I don't doubt it, but they stayed to 12 million. We, got, we, we didn't have to make a cut to the project. I want to remind everybody that, which then means that to the taxpayers of Norton, this is the last major, major project right now, and you have three roofs to go. Once you do that, your building envelope for your five buildings are very good for the next 30 to 40 years. And that, that's, that's, that's huge, because that takes operating money and all of that stuff that you don't have to worry about. So um, we really think this project as well. I do believe that Train has, at the beginning of this, was involved with the town side buildings. I don't know where that stands, but if you remember, that was part of doing this, so I'd like to bring that up at some point, uh, because there's potential savings on that side with some of their buildings, including they're building uh, two new buildings, a senior center and a town hall, which are much needed in the town. So I think my colleagues from Train, it's, it's, it's been, you know, it's like a heartbeat, right? It's up and down just because of things we can't control on our side and they can't control on their side. And that's probably been the hardest part of this project um, has been that, so thank you. So the, the solar panels are in, but not right now. Correct, so the solar panels, this connection process with the utility company is the 28th and 29th, if I remember correctly. Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. Four out of the five schools. Four out of the five schools. So then within a reasonable amount of time after that, I believe the argument was a couple of weeks maybe, that we should be able to pull the plug and we should start to see these solar panels 
on at night generating. and generating. Uh, and then we'll uh, see the lights at night. Yeah. And then you'll see the lights at night, and then you start to see the the big picture savings of getting some of those state grants and all that stuff. And there's a potential for other federal money as well because of what we've done for this. When's the fifth school? It's going to be the middle school's going to be during uh, February vacation week. Oh, okay. Yep. Wait, has this, uh, <laughs> has this made your life um, somewhat different? Uh, it, it's it's been a lot of work. Uh, I think. I mean, uh, to, the to has, but the yeah, new, the, the, new system. the idea that we have control of this now, either from my phone or from my desktop, uh, makes life a lot easier. You know, we can now, we can actually now click on a an actual unit in a classroom and find out what, why it's not working. Mm -hmm. uh, we can call for help and have these guys remotely jump in and see what's going on. So, yeah, it, it really has made our lives a lot easier. For me, I think the biggest thing I've noticed is the consistency now throughout the buildings. Before you would have some hot, hot areas, you'd have some cold, cold mm -hmm. areas. You have some consistency now throughout the buildings. And I think that's really probably the best improvement that I've seen. Plus, we're doing the right thing. I mean, we're saving energy. We're saving a lot of money on energy. Um, and then I just would publicly like to thank Train because um, you know they were ahead of this. They, they ordered all our unit vents, all our equipment, all our rooftop units. They ordered it with good faith and got it here on time with all the supply issues, all the other facility directors that I'm dealing with that are in, in the middle of construction right now, they're, they're not getting their products. Right. They're way behind. Uh, these guys were really on the ball and they, they took a chance with us uh, by ordering the equipment, putting it in a storage place somewhere, uh, and then when we signed the contract, we were ready to go. So um, uh, really kudos to them. Their team has been polite. Uh, the team has been working in the schools, during school, um, they, they've really done a great job with um, really accommodating all our needs um, and, and trying to uh, try to make our buildings really much just just more comfortable uh, and, and, and a better academic learning space. One question and then one point I guess is with the carports and the solar, just this is more for my own self, why didn't we do the roof instead of putting it in the park? Just so I, I could answer that. Uh, so our roofs are old, right? Our roofs are very old. And I think anybody who has solar at home, uh, you don't put solar on an old roof. You put solar on a new roof, and then that solar sits there. Uh, we had solar on the gymnasium uh, roof here, and it really turned into a problem. Anytime you had a leak, you had to pull an electrician out here. You had to cut the sections of that off the roof. Uh, you had to bring cranes in to try to find that leak. These are flat rubber roofs. This particular one's 25 years old. Uh, anytime you're up there walking on that roof, anytime you're doing that, it's the, the roofs just can't handle it. Yeah. Um, I think it's important because uh, I had the same question when this whole project came. I'm like, okay, carport, and I wanted to do some carports too, or, or at least consider it. So we, we we knew that three buildings were working at 25 plus years of roof, so that means we're going to have to do a roof first. That doesn't make any sense to go in the reverse. And then we've really had two roofs where um, the the way that it's built, it's a lot of angles. And then the last one is the high school roof in particular has massive HV systems on it. I can tell you from a storm where I only learned this because the director of facilities was on vacation in the middle of a storm. <laughs> My only vacation. The only vacation he took that year. We had a massive storm a ton away. We had to bring in an engineer and they literally had to bounce the tennis ball to see how much weight was on top of our building. I don't know if some of you remember this. I mean, literally, we were really worried that we couldn't have school because of the amount of weight that was in our building. So the high school became a quick no about souls on the roof. So that's why. Perfect. And then my next point, I think, to you know, thank you so much because Bill Wayne and Joe, because these are the projects that aren't eye appealing. Yeah, you know, right. it's, it's all behind the scenes. The general 95% of people have no idea what's going on in those systems and that but you know, like you said, you're, you've set us up now for 30, 40 years of it's going to all live all of us, probably not. All, hopefully not all of us, but right. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, 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 yeah. to your point, yeah. Nick, to your point, though, I think it's really important what you just said because I always say that the, the building stuff like this isn't quote sexy, right? Nobody right. sees it. But the other part of it is, and I just came up with this literally a few minutes ago because I know you've been an adamant supporter of, of this, is the issue behind. Like if COVID were to hit tomorrow again, and we are, we're looking at a serious issue, our systems that are at are, are a level that nobody in this area is at, Correct. it would lead to some interesting discussions about those other discussions we had back in the day that caused all kinds of teetering, tarring back and forth. Because now we can control every classroom's ventilation of fresh air coming in. I mean, at times that it says, you know, it's blowing cold air. Well, it's blowing cold air because it's saying there's too much hot, not good air in the room. And, 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 and it's bringing in the fresh air while at the same time also uh, keeping them warm. So I'm pretty excited about this project, to be quite honest. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, like I said, it's just maintenance always seems to be the last on everyone's agenda in terms of like, oh, why do we need that? Oh, God, you know, whatever. And it's just so important that you kind of get it all done in one shot. I think it's huge. You know, that we're not playing catch up. We're trying to catch this whole up and, you know, making it that much more difficult. Get it done. Now it's done. You know, figure out the bugs within the system. Obviously, work with the partnership. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I think another point too, and I think we have this conversation private, not privately, but you know, you ran out of people that could service a steam boiler. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, so I, I believe there was one guy that walked in, he's like, nope, and left. Yeah, so many those the companies because, out there that work on medics anymore. I yeah. mean, we, we were down to one one contract basically, and um, you know, or yeah. eBay parts. Yeah. yeah, not a good idea. Not eBay just, parts, not a good idea. But if nobody has them, where do yeah. you get them? Right, and they're not certified anymore. So you're literally spending two thousand dollars on something that's not could work for thirty seconds. So I thank my uh, our partners from Train very yeah, much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Just a couple notes because you sure. mentioned the federal grant money. Yep. We are investigating IRA funds yep. for the solar. Yep. Um, so we appreciate we'll that. Updated and we'll let you know what we find. They haven't released any guidance on right. that. It was supposed to come out beginning of January. And that's one of the great things about this project too, is that these types of situations, train is there to try to find you an extra fifty thousand or a hundred thousand if they can, because that just benefits them going out for other projects long term, um, even with the, the project that's already done. So yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. 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 Okay. Uh, next cool. item is capital improvement plan, Mrs. Hatfield. the FY24 plan. Um, the very first one that we have is to install the new fire protection device um, here at the middle school um, to communicate with our new fire panel. Um, the next one is the safety requirement and protocols for our exterior access points um, for the schools. This will include video entry, intercom, door access control system, and a double entry here at the middle school. The next one is um, a second exit access road here at the middle school, which will be down where the um, shed was taken down near the park over here. Um, I didn't even notice that shed was gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was, we we appreciate the other way to work. We appreciate our friends at the highway department yeah. very very much. Yeah, that was a nice one. Needed to come down. Yes. And um, also the interactive Promethean boards, um, which will be district wide, but this first one will be just here to outfit the entire middle school. And the last is in the auditorium. Also here at the middle school, which will be to replace um, old and outdated lighting system and stage curtains um, because the technology is too old to support the equipment and um, get it get replaced with parts. So, where, where do these rank as, as in terms of priority? Right. So right now, um, the order that you see them in are pretty much the order that we're thinking of. They might switch a little bit because yesterday we potentially got ourselves into looking <coughs> grant for the safety requirements and protocols okay. for um, our district wide. Um, it's $50,000 per building for up to three buildings. Are those upgrades? So, I'm sorry? Are those upgrades? I thought we already had the cameras. We do. So I, I'll give you an example. In some of our um, uh, buildings we have a camera on the outside but the in-between doors don't the safety protocols are that we have one at each spot as an example key fobs we have keys at the elementary schools to get back into the building from recess we want to go to fobs because fobs are easier to get into the building than trying to put in a key right um, and so those are the types of things that are, is a laundry list of this and that that I I don't think we're going to get the grant but um, I've asked my Can colleagues in can you disable the fob? Yes. Teacher reports it's lost, it's disabled. Yep. Yeah, we go through that a lot. Um, from all employees, not just our teachers. Um, and then the um, the uh, auditorium lighting, um, we, we are at the beginning point of not being able to really, um, uh, we, we have people interested in renting it, we can't because the lighting is just so awful. 
and the stage curtain is, is uh, fire retardant days are at an end um, and they have to be fire redundant you wouldn't ma you can't imagine how much you pay for a, a stage curtain the technology displays uh, this is the la the only building where it's really far behind um, this has been on here for about three or four years now um, and then the new fire protection device is actually at the front of the building as you're coming in um, and that has a tendency to beef a lot uh, because it's not working and also the, we're starting to get to the to the point of finding parts is impossible. Um, just today, we actually had uh, the fire alarm go off in this building um, right before the kids came and and, um, uh, and all of that, and, and our fire department came down and helped us with it. Then we had a call for a service and so on and so forth, and it wasn't at that box, but, but my point is we need to to make sure that this uh, protection device is prioritized. It's a total- we had that on. We've had that on at least yeah. five years. I was going to say, we keep least, bumping it gets that. Bumped, but it's getting yeah. to the point where um, can. it, it, we can't. Right. And, and to be quite honest, the, the, our, our fire colleagues have said it should be a priority yeah. for us. Okay. Sometimes these things are tough to look at because you look and you say, wait, didn't we do that? Yeah. And then you realize that's now, always. Just, right. That's what we're going to have for the exactly. exterior doors. I'm like, we just did all the right. right doors right. and windows. The biggest issue here is um, right now I don't know what's available, so we will have to. Um, take a look at capital and see what's available and, and then go from there. Of course, if I can get any um, any um, the, the access road, just to know for the middle school, that, that would be done with our highway department. Mm -hmm. um, um, the, um, there is a secondary exit there already cut into the road. Um, the state won't let us create where there isn't one without going through engineering and all that stuff. So um, and then <coughs> lastly, um, as you know, and, and I usually bring this up in, in, in executive session with school safety, so I'm not going to get specific, but what we're trying to attain in every building at all and main entrances is double entry, double video, double have to use a fob, or double have to be uh, set buzzed in. Okay. So this this 45 is from highway, right? So that would be... Yeah, so this... So we would essentially be paying highway to do that. Yeah, it's an expense situation. As you know, Keith, the highway uh, superintendent is an incredible partner for us. I can't tell you how much stuff we get. It's incredible how much help he gives us. Um, I, you saw that last minute situation down at the JCS with the parking lot was a disaster on the entrance, and now it's just nice smooth entrance. Um, we'll probably do some more of that in the future as well. A lot of times that's very common. Yeah, I know it's a little more time. Utility, yeah, material, yeah. So would this, en this entrance would go around the Oak? No, no. It's going to go by the Tricentennial Park. Be, would it be like a right right turn only or so we, we haven't looked at the logistics of it yet um, so we originally went to go to the right side of the old barn came out and there's yeah. a driveway there now yes. but uh, right. when they did 123 they ended up putting curbs and the state will not let us cut that curb at this point so the only curb cut out there is the tricentennial park entrance Got it. so we're going to come around to where the old shed was uh, we took the shed down so we'd have clearance so we could see everything cars can pull out over there we just haven't decided I, we have to look at how we get our parents out of here during pickup and drop off time and the buses as well um, right turn only right or left turn only will be a lot faster from that place because you're not dealing with the power street intersection and the people pulling into the school you'll just have that that one right and that one left and you have a really good view by the bank you don't have that kind of corner coming around so um, it, it's it's a little skinnier than we like, but I right. think uh, we're going to kind of like start it a little wider and then bring it down to where we are, just to meet the state's uh, needs on that. So you're voting on the capital plan as a whole, basically. So I have a couple questions. Before yep. Um So my first question was the safety protocols was not great. Um, my second question, so um, and I'm, I'm looking at 2025 really right now. Yep. The parking lot resurface at the at the EL. Can we use a revolving from the high school parking fees? We cannot. Because that's not the high school. It's specific. <laughs> Instead of bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. The, yeah. the, the, the town meeting vote to establish that revolving account is specific to Norton High School okay. only. I, I, I thought that was possibly the case, but. Um, and then the, the district wide Wi Fi? Yes. That have a brick? Are we. Yes. Are so, we not thank you for asking that. So, remember, my first year here, we got 400000 so we yeah. can do. Once we could do uh, ac yeah, access in every classroom. Yeah. Okay. So this 500,000 is actually not 500,000. It's actually 50% of that because E-rate is it more like than, yeah. Okay. It says 500 because we have to go in with what the concept is. But what happens is 
the E rate will go after that money and therefore only cost us potentially the 250 or we think even closer to 60% on the dollar, not, not uh, our, uh, uh, than 50%. Okay, but so we have to claim it as a project because I have no guarantee at this point that that percentage is going to be coming from So the it's going to be, we assume it's going to be 250, but, but the, the, I guess the larger question is, is the Wi Fi is, is that? It's an issue. Right it's it's becoming an issue. Yeah, okay. it's, it's we got to remember that the amount of technology that we use has been upgraded almost yearly, yeah. while the well, actual infrastructure. I see. Remember not. when we were doing the MCAS and there was going to talk about um, doing it over whatever. We weren't actually positive that we had the, the capacity to do the MCAS. Correct. Oh, yeah. Correct. So at one point, we, we we didn't have the capacity. Yeah. Well, even it was right after the high school was built, we had to go to the we, town meeting because we, we went we went every other. Right. When the, the project library. was built at the high school, they put the Wi-Fi connector every other project. By the time the project was accepted and when we opened, it was three years later. By then, kids on average had 3.4 or 3.6, whatever it was, actual technology pieces on their hands and available to them. So that's why we did that upgrade so, at the time. And then my last question is, uh, in 2025, so I'm going to call it 1 million 150 because we think the 500 is going to be yep. 250. But if you look at the other years, and I get why, you know, in 2027, it's 295 because we probably don't know what we need yet, how that far. Uh, but it seems like we're... we're Putting a big nut in that 2025, including a bunch of TBDs, does it make sense to spread that out a little bit more? Yeah. So the the, the biggest issue that we have here is that the, the likelihood of half a million dollars coming, or even 500,000 coming at any point over the next few years, is probably limited to none. Um, what we tried to do with this list was basically just say these are areas of concern. Like for example, the parking lot resurface at the Hay for 100,000. That will probably be pushed out another year or two. Yeah. We'll probably what we can probably do is take some of these bigger nuts, as you said. Um, the athletic floors at the LGN, JCS, and NMS, uh, those are the gym floors. Uh, they're all behind. One of them, uh, two of the three of them, I believe, is also an abatement situation. Um, we so we could, we, the L, right? we could break these up into three smaller yes. projects. The issue is, if you have abatement, you probably want to go with one project because yeah. you don't want to be charged over well, and over again. I think, I think we should move some of these things forward to 2024, even if we don't get them. Quite honestly, I'm, uh, you you tell us and we'll make the move. I mean, what do people think about that? Which ones are you thinking that is? Well, here's the thing. I don't know. Before you, well, you do it as you wish, but I don't know what's available in capital right I now. Either. I don't think it's a lot, yeah. and there's some concerns well, about the budget anyway. So, so before we, before we pass this, and we don't think it's a lot. Shouldn't we move something forward in case it is a lot? <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, you could do right. that way. And, and the reason for this is you you also have a due date timeline, and I have to make sure that I have right. a plan available so, to the time. I mean, we can always we can always not get it and put it to next year. We've been doing that for years. You know, right. We're talking about that. Yep. So I, I think rather than say, oh, hey, yeah, tomorrow, uh, sorry, uh, next year we're looking at one one point one five million, which we, we dare right. Well, no, we're not going to get. I mean, we should probably move some of it to this year, and. and Get a shot and ask and get shot. Yeah, I, right. I mean, but, you know, if the Wi Fi Joe is causing some delays and we're recognizing that we're using that for teaching and learning, right? What if that is, you know, sort of move that over? Yep. I, again, it's, it's all about trying to, uh, I mean, we got two items in 2024 that have been here for at least the last five years, if not longer, and they're always bumped. The fire panel yeah, and the so technology displays. We just know how this this yeah. works right. sitting on that committee. Yeah, we just keep bumping things. Well, I, I mean, I guess to Denise's point of mm -hmm. the 2025s, what is the next priority? Would it be the Wi-Fi? Yeah, the, the Wi-Fi would be a priority for 20 fiscal 25, but more than likely, yeah. So, I mean, just assuming that that was our priority, you know, that's going to put us at 250, and there's a ton of things on there that are 250, 150. I mean, we're not going to get much more than that next year or next next uh, it, it somewhat evens out your numbers though for over year over year say again it, it evens out 24 and 25 where you have 500 555 1.4 mm -hmm. if we move the wi-fi it, it's a little bit right no, no i'm saying if we don't if we don't do that that almost eats up your whole budget in 2025 yeah. i mean because it's 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 half of what but again we don't think we're gonna get 500 well that's half of 500 right there I mean, it's gonna so, so you're looking at a bunch of projects in 2025 that we have zero shot of getting. That, that more than likely, either that or you're taking them and you're breaking them down into further. Classroom furniture goes from 150 to 75, or you do half of the middle school only, not the entire middle school, or whatever the, the cost would be. Whatever your wish is. 
What's the what's the staircase? Are, are any of them in twenty twenty five like a safety issue? I know this parking lot, ceiling tiles, staircases, no, maybe, fence. Maybe staircases and say somebody tripped. Yeah, but that, that's not where we're at. What we're at is um, it's the back staircase at the middle school. It's the back staircase at the middle school. So do you want to move the 500,000 <coughs> district Wi-Fi into 2024 for the purposes of, you know, at least recognizing that needs to become the, the priority over the next yeah, two yeah, fiscal years? Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So we'll yeah, move that over as amended. Nick? Oh, we got a vote on it, right? Yeah, you got to yeah. vote on it to change. Do you have any thoughts on that? No, I mean, I think that makes a whole ton of sense. Because, I mean, especially if we're looking at teaching and learning, I think that's a little bit more important than a stage card. No, I mean, that is yeah, I get is, it. Yeah. Help, right? no. you gotta, you gotta Good point. prioritize something yep. that, you know, if we push that <coughs> out. What are, by like technology displays, obviously there's a lot of money to that. Can we yeah. just kind of highlight that? What is that? Yeah, about? so those are taking a look at Promethean boards and making sure that they're in the, so our, our K to five is pretty set. And then the kids come here. We only have a few classrooms with them, and so equity, teaching, and learning becomes a little bit of a concern. And so it's been on there for a while. But if our Wi-Fi doesn't work very well, those kind of well, that's some, some of the <laughs> issues, right? No, that's a good point. I didn't think of it that way. That's a good point. They're TV monitors. <laughs> so we'll 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 move. We'll uh, as amended would be the would be the vote. So I mean, that's actually the argument, right? Is we need the Wi-Fi to support the Promethean boards. So yeah. I mean. Well, yeah, I'm mean, hoping that some of the federal technology yes, money allows for us to take infrastructure money, Correct. which would be Wi-Fi, and then Promethean would be capital. That's yeah. what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Karen this morning really put it on the table. Was it this morning yesterday? I can't remember. She really put it on the table and said, don't forget, it's 500000 but you could go after E-rate. And I said, oh, I didn't know that. So um, the last time we didn't go after E-rate. So that's a deal breaker. So. Yeah, I mean, I think 2024, we definitely got to get the safety stuff squared away ASAP. No questions asked, if you will. Yeah. You know, I mean, and again, if something gets pushed back, and Wi-Fi gets pushed back to 2025. So, so be it. Yeah. You know. Okay. Or does Wi-Fi supplement or supplant anything in 2024? So again, and I think it's going to depend on a couple of different things. It's, uh, we are really active on federal and state grants right now. We've actually been receiving some. I'm about to announce one of them tonight. It's a small grant, but it... it it helps with teaching and learning. So I'm hoping that some of this infrastructure money is going to become available to schools. There is a ton of federal and state money available. Um, most of it is just like was said today at the presentation with Train. They just have they just haven't put it out yet in terms of rules. So I, I would hate to spend 250 if we can get 150 of out of, out of a grant instead a year later. So know. worst case scenario, I suppose, if we're granted 500 and it comes in at 250, we would have to go to town meeting. No, if one, if you vote, if you if you get the five hundred and there's money left over, then capital <coughs> it, and then capital it, it stays in the capital. Yep, and they can reuse it again if they need to. Typically, in these types of things, what would happen is we would inform the town. There's going to be an e-rate. We have it in writing. It's going to be whatever, and the town can can only put off aside what needs to be put aside, okay. and allows for maybe the special town meeting in the fall to already have money available, more money available than it thought, as an example. Question. This is probably a stupid question too. With the with the Wi-Fi, I'm assuming our high school and middle school are drawing way more Wi-Fi than yes, IJCS. yes, yeah. Is that all kind of factored in? We just kind of take a snapshot of it's a snapshot because of the age of the stuff. Gotcha. That's, right. that's the biggest problem. Like remember, it was 2013, 14 school year at the fall town meeting that I got that I proposed and we got the money, and then we we put it in play that July and got it all done. So all of that as of this July is 10 years old. And it's just not there. It's it's and and the security systems and the, all that stuff. Yeah, I was just thinking about your personal Wi-Fi. Oh, I've replaced mine you know, two, three times in ten years. So it's a problem. Technology is so yeah. expensive. <laughs> okay. So the vote would be as a method. I think that's ten years old. We just hit all of it. We've been doing this years. <laughs> um, all right. So entertain a motion to approve capital improvement plan as amended. So moved. No seconds. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you all. Okay, um, review and vote on town meeting articles. Okay, so these for um, probably for Nick more than anyone else because he's new to the process. We have a deadline of passing in articles. So these are what we call hold and protect ourselves articles only. Okay, so there's no money associated with these. Um, but one is the supplemental budget for the current school year. 
Uh, the other one is at a joint meeting, do we talk about town and school projects and a debt exclusion? And then the third one is a, a town of Norton special education stabilization fund, which we brought up before. And I think it's important to bring it up again. Again, any of these can be pulled. This is just to hold just them to because if we don't, then we can't do it later. Now, what? Just refresh. What is the stabilization? So the stabilization fund is does two things. First of all, it takes either earmarked money, like any other stabilization fund, and moves it into that, or it allows you to take a vote and at the end of year money and say we're going to put thirty thousand dollars into stabilization for special education. It can only be used for special education with a vote of town meeting of two thirds. In other words, you are giving up your authority as a school committee to the town meeting to move that money into the special department because, for example, um, we, we've got in the vicinity of a million dollars worth of move-ins in special education this year. So if you had half a million dollars in there, you could potentially say, based on the budget finding, you know, taking money from here and there, we're short 259, we got a stabilization account with a million, Let's take 259 out instead of going back to the supplemental. So I'm I'm absolutely fine giving up my authority because only uh, only two thirds of ASC would not vote that through. Right. So I don't have any issue with mm -hmm. with that. Um, and, and my memory is that this is people generally like like we're supportive of this in the town. Like I think I think Mike was was supportive of it. If memory serves me, like Bob Kimball back in the day thought this was a good idea. This this is not an unpopular thing. Mm -hmm by any stretch. It yeah. makes a ton of sense. It, yeah, the, the issue that comes down to is that your town is, is graded for, uh, for its um, ability to borrow and all that through Moody's and all those different things on making sure that your regular stabilization account is growing X percent every year. Right? You right. See, the, this stabilization account would actually only support the financial concept that you're putting away money for an emergency that you can't control. Right. You take a budget that you passed in May, it's effect July 1st, and a, a student who deserves and moves into the town of Norton and deserves to be educated has a significant uh, medical learning disability and is costing you $300,000 a year. You didn't budget for that. Now, maybe you get some because we always try to put at least $100,000, $150,000 on account. Maybe we, we, we can do that. Um, this year we're absorbing a lot of students because they're coming in after the start of the school year. I was just going to say, I mean, this would be a good thing to have at like a ball town meeting because there was three or four years ago. $800,000. $800, I think this is one of the first And we brought it down, right, we had a student, and we brought, we brought it down to under 300000 by the end of the year, but we had to steal from one line item to put it to the other. We cut, if you remember, we eliminated our supply line items and all that because we didn't want to have a half a million um, cost of the town. That's a good question. When I was reading the packet, I, I, was, I was thinking about this and I jotted it down. If somebody, so if somebody moves into the town in December and there's a significant spent cost out of district tuition, what, what have you, when do we pick up the cost? Well, in general, you pick it up as a cost share on day one. So, and, and I was wondering if that would be the answer. And my, my rebuttal is, why do we pick it up? The way the law is established. Yeah, except for one thing. The other town, wherever they're coming from, has already put through their town meeting the expense for that for so the, the year, hotel. right? Yeah. So if they used, for example, it depends on what they used, right? So remember that many of these, we put it into that formula for circuit breaker. You know, the 40000 yeah. off the top, you get 75% later, so on and so forth. You don't see that money until a year later. Yeah, no, I get so, that. But, but you don't budget. So you don't budget in arrears, you don't budget for the past, you budget for the future. Correct. So they went to their town meeting, assuming they have the same setup as we do. They went to their town meeting yeah. and said, hey, we need 250000 for, you know, they yeah. don't say it this way, but Billy Jones or whomever, it's not a district cost of 250000 And they got 250000 to pay for that. And then in December, they moved here, and we pick up the cost. Now I get it, it could go the other way very easily, but, but why doesn't the initiating town pick up the cost for the entirety of that, this, that so you just answered it. The reason is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Christine, but um, this year alone, it's been exactly what you just said. We've gained by kids who've left, and then lost by kids who've come in. Right, but but isn't it doesn't it make more sense, like fiscally for everybody, if you budget for it for that year, you should just pick up the cost for the rest of the so year. So one of the arguments that's made, it's actually made by one of your state representatives. Um, 
years ago, he actually filed the bill, if I remember correctly, and it didn't go anywhere. And that is the, the, the money follows the child. Right. So if the kid costs two fifty for the that's, year, that's or hundred thousand, exactly then that saying. money goes comes to Norton schools with the kid from that out of town, so on and so forth. That that gets no play at the state house. Well, it should. It's the right answer. It's okay. many people would say at least for that fiscal year. Like that's if what I'm if I know that that's next saying. July, yeah. I have that. I get student. it. After that, we budget right. for it. Right. But, but, but at least for that year. But that's not the way it works. I mean, I do listen. I know I'm, I'm talking to the wrong group. Like and I'm just, I'm just well, wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> like the student comes in after. Is it October? No, it's actually that's the uh, that's the residency the uh, the account. It's uh, it's if I remember correctly, it's after the first day of school. <coughs> new, the new the new um, academic year, I believe, is the language in it versus so, fiscal year. And I don't want to misspeak, so correct me. So if they come in after our first day of school, we don't even get credit that they're our student until the following school year. Well, they. We, they're enrolled they're with us October first. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're part but of our October first. October tenth, they're not counted. Yeah, we pick school. them up in March, so we only see partial. Okay. Because remember, we do enrollment well, again. We pick in March. up the bill. Yeah. Did you have something else you wanted to add to that? Um, and also transportation, like yeah. that's not included in that. So even if say someone moved in and they were going to a private school, um, that former town would pick up that for the remainder of the year. We all of a sudden, even if it's all the way in Boston, all of a sudden now have to take the transportation cost, which is sometimes more than the school. Regardless. Yeah, so I mean, that's that day that they move in. They could live next to their collaborative and they could walk their kid mm -hmm. and have no transportation costs and all of a sudden. Yeah, we have some parents we have some parents costs. actually who the which, child has the right to a bus. I'd be okay and, with that though, because they didn't budget for the transportation. Yeah, but, but they budgeted for the cost of the school. Exactly. Well that's the reason why everybody's pushing in and Supposedly, it's going to work the, the transportation circuit breaker that brings some money. But it's one of the reasons why you may have seen those of you who sign off, you see the, um, the uh, process for paying individual families because they're, they're getting a check from us for dropping off their child at school every day and picking up, and they get the mileage from school to home. Mm -hmm. And we pay them because it's actually less expensive. A lot, a lot less. I mean, I'm, I might be cutting a parent a check for $300, sure. which, which would cost me 300 a day. Right. So we are very happy to support that, and it's good for the child too, and the family likes it, and all that good stuff. So, all right. So, all right. so this is the, just simply a potential holes. That's how you're voting. Okay. If whatever we decide next, the school committee will have more say. But you need it for a um, potential joint meeting, anyways. Okay. Um, motion to approve the hold on town meeting. Our so second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> okay. Um, Handle the yep. calendar change. This is a simple uh, calendar change. Um, the 23rd of March at the middle school is now a full day, not a half day. If you remember, we made the change because we don't see a lot of uh, people in the spring, so the teachers are now doing it, vir do, did it virtually, they did it in person, and they're available to the parents as needed. But it's a calendar change, so it requires your vote. I don't want to keep that. Can I just ask one quick yes. question? Is there the other half day? Did we talk about having some kind of Break in March, and we sort of always refer to those half days. I don't, you know what? I don't have the, I don't calendar. Have the calendar in front I of me. I don't. I can get back to you on that though. Um, if you, I just don't have it in front of me. Just yeah, just wondering. I remember we had the discussion, but I don't think we came up with an actual. Yeah, actual I'm just solution. wondering if that was yeah. the half day that we had considered. This one is only a middle school though. It's not a district wide. So, so it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been packed, right? Thanks. Yep. I think this is probably a little off, off topic, but. I think we should look at probably into next year of when we're doing parent conferences and probably get a little more specific on exactly when and what, you know, because I know they typically will happen around terms and everything else that way. But to be, you know, especially with the virtual stuff now and the ability to contact your teacher pretty much at any given point of any given day has kind of made the parent conference go away a little bit from, from what it used to be. Yeah, Nick, you're, you know, it's this is like come to school before yeah, Labor Day or don't come. We have such a mix of views on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have parents who are adamant that they have to have that day. That's the day that they can come in and all that. And then we have families that are like, especially in 6 to 12 now, with the whole 30 minutes after school, a teacher, if they don't have any kids in front of them, could say, I'm going to make a phone call today and talk to Frankie's, you know, uh, to Frankie's mom about he's not doing his homework and that's probably at the time better than waiting four weeks for a parent conference which right? yeah. what I think is your argument right while we why wait so long to to do it we do try to do it at the breaks uh, of the quarters of semester simply because 
now we know the kid a little bit better, we know the child better, we know their learning abilities, where they're struggling, and so on and so forth. Uh, but you're right, this is a, this is, uh, you know, I, I can't win whatever I mean, I recommendation sure, we make. Sure. To that point, too, we, we've looked at, you know, uh, I mean, we're kind of unique where we have multiple kids in a, in a school or in different schools. We've looked at the scheduling so parents can actually get yeah. to multiple ones if necessary. Yeah. And not all on Wednesday. Right, exactly. So we're trying to be flexible. We're trying not to hold them on the same days because a parent might have a child at the Hay and then a, a, a child right. at the middle school. Um, you know, we've opened it up in the afternoon by having the early release day. Now we have that 12.30 to 3.30 and then come back in the evening for a 6 to 8. And and the numbers, it depends. I mean, it's yeah. it all depends on a lot of things. But I think you're right to one thing. I worked in the school system as a teacher 20 plus years ago, or 20 years ago, that where um, we had a welcome back night with our parents about expectations, but it was on me, under my contract, to any time a student got into that C below range and they weren't working hard and passing their grade, it was my expectation to make the phone call, and I didn't have a cell phone in those days, or email, uh, which I think opens up yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, and also, the, I don't think that the uh, teacher conference things are going very well. We're happy to get so, input. Oh. I think it's, we don't go anymore either because yeah. it's too hard to get in. You it's too hard to get in. It's a quick teachers. seven to ten minutes at best yeah. at the secondary level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, only, my concern around this too, though, is uh, there's got to be something in the teachers' union contracts as in terms of what they're well, yeah. well, well, right now it's under hours. Right, right now it's under hours. It's just, and management has the right to organize it in the way that we think is, is appropriate and, you know, good for kids and the families and good for staff. It's not, if I remember correctly, the, the contract doesn't say da 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 It's a little bit more liberal, but we're happy to take uh, constructive criticism on making it better, especially from parents that are stopped attending because it was just too much. I actually think that the, the um, and, and I'm not a big fan as a parent, though. The whole idea that I get seven minutes to talk to Nick, my teacher, social studies teacher, is like, you know, uh, that, that's, I can't even understand, you know, like, yeah, yeah your kid's getting an A minus, why are you here? Well, I'm here because of how, how did she get a name, yeah. right? The op versus what we really also want to see, which is your kid's failing, and it's because they're not doing homework. How can you help me? And that's a longer conversation, so, right? But, but, but I think that's what kind of what Nick was saying too, right? It's like if if that's the problem, there's a million other ways to get in front of them and, and yeah, talk exactly. to them. Right. So my sense of the parent-teacher conference has not been it's only for the kids who are not doing well. It's been for everybody to kind of go in and say, Correct. Hey, how is my kid doing? Et cetera, et cetera. So if you if you look at okay whatever they do like two nights of it, and they have I don't know 25 spots a night, that's 50 spots. If they have 150 kids, 100 parents, 100 100 kids parents can't get a spot. Somebody so, always gets knocked off. Right. It's a it's a fact. Right. So it, it that that's my point here. Right. Is like it, it's it's not wrong well. Like if people can't get in to see them on that night, they have to now do a special. Meeting just to sit down. Yeah, the them. question becomes how many nights do you do for para conferences? And in today's world, I would argue that I think Zoom and telephone is it can be. I, I know some of our parents are taking advantage of the Zoom, and our staff does as well. I've seen it because it's it's a it's a now situation, right? It's not called parent conferences, right. and you're waiting four right. weeks. Right. It's happening because there's an issue going on in the yeah. teacher. Right. And wants yeah, to I think that's my point. point. It's like it's, a, it's almost a little archaic. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Uh, it is what society is now, but everyone wants the answer now. I don't want to wait four weeks, right. you know. And then again, that's why we don't go. When, well, when you wait four weeks, weeks, you right. wait five minutes or a second, right. whatever yeah. it is, and it's like you're trying to fly through things. And I'm like, I feel like I'm being rushed, right. yeah. you know. And I'm sure the teacher feels the same way, yeah. you know, being like, well, you know, any more questions, whatever. You know? Let me put a, a, a working group together for parent conferences and kind of take a look at what we do K to five that is working well. Isn't I will tell you that the registration online is liked by people because yeah. they get the email the first thing they do is click and get in right yeah. um, unfortunately if you don't do that then you're behind it's not like by the person who comes a little late you know? right exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I, mean, you know, I have mixed feelings too I mean like for my for one of my children I haven't been to a conference in a while because she has very good grades right but I mean and to, to your point Nick and love you to you Tenez, if there's an issue you shouldn't be waiting four weeks yeah. to parent conference because it could be like no. That's why oh, yeah, he's doing good. But uh, four weeks ago, right. I should have called you because he failed three tests. Yeah, that's why that that like that event shouldn't be looked at that way. It should be looked at more of a you sit down with the teacher and kind of put a, put a name of the face. Correct. Okay, this is who my kid's talking about. You know, 
you get a sense of, okay, how, how are they doing in your class? They're doing pretty good. Okay, good. Are they paying attention? Yeah, yeah. whatever. It's more of kind of a meet and greet, I guess. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I felt like the October yeah. one. It's like you meet the teacher, kind of put a face, yeah. kind of get the, oh, okay, I know what's going on here. Right. You know? And then it's after that, it's kind of... And there's problems, then you figure it out. We used to sit down, we, we, when I was a teacher, like I said earlier, it was, uh, be quick, it was a uh, meet the teacher and the curriculum night. And we, I would have my class for like 15 minutes. And I would just say, this is my homework expectation. These are the units we're working on. This is how you can contact me. This is when I'm available after school. And um, you know, the kids will be working on some major projects. And each, each Now, most of the teachers today do that via Google Doc and send it home. But I still got that opportunity to take a Q&A and all that. It wasn't a parent-teacher conference. I was expected that when a kid's grades were slipping, discipline was a problem, I had to get on the phone and make a phone call. Joe, didn't they, I don't know if they still do that at the high school, but wasn't that the way that they did it at the high school? Yes. You yeah, would go in and get your children's yep. Um, yep. schedule, schedule, and, and then, then you follow. would just follow your yep. children's and, um, sort of yep. period. And I think that that always was very, I mean, from my experience yep. of doing that, that always was very well attended and it was exactly that it was sort of putting a face to a name and it was getting to know the teacher and expectations and you had 15 minutes sitting in their classroom and then the bell would ring and you'd go to the next right. classroom yep. so. because i think it's more important for parents and teachers to have a communication about expectations early on at the beginning of the year and what should happen and then allow for the dialogue right we have parents who do not check their kids grades ever but think that kids are doing great because they never got communicated from the school well, yeah. that, that can't happen, right? We have to make kids failing. I expect a teacher, and we did that in this new contract with the 30 hours and moving that all around in the 30 minutes after school. Not because I just wanted to keep adults after school for kids to be able to go see. Yes, that's true. But they have the time now that if nobody shows up, and um, we're going to be moving towards a new phone system in the district that allows for people to just or right from their computer, or if they choose, they can put it on their cell phone with no personal information, all our phone numbers. You can do it at any time of day, and you can do it during your prep period, or you can do it after school, or you can do it on your way to work in the morning. I mean, most companies now don't even have phones anymore. Yep. It's all through the computer. We have yep. it at work. It's, it's, yeah, it's we're, going to, we're moving to Zoom, Zoom phones. Yeah. So we have to have them physically because we, we want direct access to 911. Yeah, that's yeah, different scenario. Right. Okay. I do need a vote on that. Uh, March 17th is the district have to. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. you. All right, so I entertain a motion to uh, for the calendar change for a motor middle school. This means the buses. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thanks, guys. All those opposed? Why are you opposed? I'm not going home to Ryland telling her I voted away half <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell her before, it. Denzel. <laughs> Is he being serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Four four one. Four. I don't know. <laughs> You nope. see what he it does to me on snow one, days. I am a no. And put them in a screw no was. Cool, right? Other business real quick for the committee. I just wanted to announce that uh, thanks to the work of uh, many, but especially Ethan and Jen, um, and some of our staff as well, um, the uh, Norton High School has received a $24,491 uh, innovation planning grant for advanced manufacturing. Um, so we, we're looking at, I just met with the team this morning, we have two local businesses, it's not formal yet, but we have one, uh, two local businesses that are all about our students and working with us and getting jobs and looking at the field of manufacturing, which is the growing, grow, fastest growing area in uh, Massachusetts, especially Bristol County. Um, we need some joint meeting dates with the uh, select board and FinCom, I'll get you some dates from them, I'm working with Mike to try to figure that out. Um, 6,303 bills were filed this year by the state, the state house and the senate. One thousand plus of them are education bills, um, and you have a copy of one. I've just given you. It's not for debate. It's just a piece of information for you to have. And then, um, um, Mr. Cameron from um, the Veterans Association reached out. Um, they've asked for June twelfth to June nineteenth for the carnival at the Yale School. So I'll formally be presenting that to you as soon as I get Would it ready for me. That would be in the front parking lot. They've already measured, measured the solar issue and where things would go, and it all fits. And across the way, um, I believe, and I, I don't want to say this out loud because I'm not sure the location is where the people are going to be housed, uh, the carnival workers, because typically they are behind our school. We can't have that happen with school in session. Um, I just talked to them yesterday. So, yesterday. That yeah. is true. Yeah. They're going to be across the street. Yeah, they're going to be across the yeah. street. So um, we'll work with them. We'll get it done. Um, it's a good thing. It's a good event. Um, 
Um, and it's an easy event for us because we just say yes and then they do their own thing. There's a $5 million liability insurance that comes with it. So again, I'll formalize that with you, but I just wanted to get it out so that you know about it before you hear it from someone else. Uh, that's, so no, uh, they'll be setting up during school hours, so we'll move the parking lot on the 12th, 13th, 14th, and on 15th at 6 o'clock at night. So if we don't have any snow, we're done on the 14th, but even if we have uh, a day, it'd be a half day on the 15th, or a half, whatever the last day for the elementary is. So it's what, the 15th through the 19th? It's the 15th through the 19th, starting at 6 o'clock at night, and I think the Saturday, Sunday, they do something in the afternoon as well. Yeah. So we like partnering with the vets, as you guys know, we always try to make sure we support them. Um, and we don't charge them. Uh, that will be another request to you guys is waive all fees. Executive yeah, we have an executive session. Um, so the motion would be a motion to um, adjourn. adjourn the regular session and move into executive session for the purposes of discussions and personnel and non-union negotiation. It'll be quick. There's a bunch of items, but a couple of them I could pull out. And it is a roll call vote. So I need the motion as read, seconded, and then I get a roll call. You know. Any Which other business? Other topics? Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the regular school committee meeting and enter into executive session with no plans to return. With the purposes of discussion purpose on personnel of and non-union negotiations. Non negotiations. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yes. Ms. Cohen. Yes. Mr. Savas. Yes. Ms. Gallagher. Yes. And Mr. Schleicher. Yes. Thank you. Roll call is done. Roll call vote. Yes. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Thank you. 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 Thank